There we go. Uh, <laughs> I think that's working. How are my levels? I'm in the yellow. I think that's good. All right. What do we got? What do we got? Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I was up at 5 a.m. myself. There's something about when the days I stream where my brain wakes me up way early. And then uh, I can't go back to sleep. So I'm right there with you, uh, John. <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, off topic, any tips to create microphone, head grill, and weave part? Yeah, yeah I want to say, um, let's see, ZBrush, I think Paul did something like that. Let's see how he did it, and let's see if there's anything we can add to that. Because um, there's a couple way, oops, turn it off. There's a couple ways you can go about that. So something like this, where you just have the repeating dots on a surface. That can be a little bit tricky um, because if you're thinking about using um, like a micro mesh or a micro poly type uh, solution, they're going to get bigger or smaller based on, you know, the the um, the polygons. Uh, so it looks like he's using a Boolean operation, which can work. Also kind of depends on the end result of do you want to 3D print this? You just want to bake this off? Um, here he is. Oh, okay, he's going. He's actually going through <laughs> most of the things I would be trying to, uh, you know, using your UVs and using dot patterns and stuff. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to link you to this video. Uh, there's probably not a lot here I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't cover. I think I, I think this has it. I'll just link you to this. Thanks, Paul. I think that'll be a good one. There's a couple different options in there. Um, we kind of did that. So if you're if you're new to this channel. Uh, let's see, YouTube playlists. Let's find the, I need to reorganize this. The Big Blue Genie. And then somewhere in here, there is a Squid Game mask that we made. Uh, a lot of, kind of the same deal. Um, trying to think about where that is. I have, I usually have it broken up into chapters. So it's got to be in here, right? So we were talking about the mask, block out, matching rest, ski mask, piping, geo, ooh. Somewhere in here, you can just click through. Uh, somewhere in here, we get to the little grill part. And I think we end up just doing it with... Um, and it's interesting, too, because the way they made this thing that actually does have the polarized little pinching uh, in the movie, or in the TV show, I should say, or streaming show, whatever they call those now, um, on their model. So I'm wondering if those are 3D printed. But anyway, uh, if you want to check that out, you can see us in action doing that right uh, hereabouts, let's say. So uh, I will go ahead and say share starting at 3605. You can check that out if you want to make a Squid Games mask slash microphone. Maybe a Squid Games microphone. Um, something sci-fi with panel cuts. Yes, we can do that. Um, I left the Warhammer 40k <laughs> model not done at all we can maybe take that to the next one um resume asked michael design a presser design what would it be um <laughs> oh boy you wouldn't want me to design anything <laughs> uh well processor designs whenever i look at the processor it's usually by the time i see it it's a square uh metal with a little stamp on it and then you put a little spotlight on it i did do a little little bit of cpu rendering in my day um, I do have, I've got a new motherboard, so maybe I'm going to swap that out this weekend. Um, new motherboard, new CPU, so we'll, we'll give the new Threadripper Pro a spin. Uh, tips for getting, uh, let's see, ready to, do, 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 do you have any tips for getting fiber mesh hair more to a game ready state? Um, fiber mesh, uh, you can use fiber mesh to basically, they're, they're curves and then you can turn the, well, they're kind of curves. You can export fiber mesh as curves, or you can turn it into geo, and you can also turn them into flat card-like geo uh, that is UV'd root to tip. Um, I don't necessarily go wholesale uh, from fiber mesh to game. Usually what I'll end up doing is, you know, maybe use fiber mesh for curves and take that into X-Gen and then turn those into kind of curves. Um, we can maybe give that a shot. That's kind of a... It's it's totally po it's totally doable. Uh, don't get me wrong. It's just I don't do a lot of it, so it might be kind of bumpy for me to go through. 
Um, I want to give you a sub on Twitch, but there's no option. Do you know why? Oh, I have no clue. Um, I will troubleshoot that later. I'm sorry about that. Maybe they they banned me from more subs. I was getting too many. Uh, let's see here. Good evening. Let's see here. Let's see here. Uh, two, 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 two. Cool, cool. Yes, awesome. All right. Well, let's do let's do some sci-fi stuff. Uh, oh, there there is one thing I actually need to do first. A little bit of housekeeping. Uh, so I got. Oh, I guess I should probably bring that up, huh? That would be nice. So in my library, I was gonna mess around with some filigree stuff. So I went through and grabbed an art station, light fountains, uh, ornamental uh, brushes, and stuff. However. Uh, if I'm ever going to use these, you know, if I ever get something that's just, you know, a hundred ZBrush, ZBrushes and or uh, a bunch of images of the filigree stuff, I know that I'm never going to go in here and, you know, load in a hundred alphas and then go and pick them out one by one. And I just, I, I know, I know that if I load them up that way, it's, it's not going to work for me and uh, how I work. So, cause I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? I, I, <laughs> I'm not even going to say it because it's going to make me sound bad, but uh, quality versus speed. If I'm just trying to get an idea out, I, if, if, I, if, if I'm just going for polish, then I don't mind kind of hunting and pecking through, but it, usually I don't have time for that. Usually it's like I'm live streaming, so I have to get it done fast. So in order to do that, uh, what I did was I, I basically took all these uh, PSDs. I mean, I guess I can walk you through it. I've done it before too. If you Google on my YouTube channel, which let me go ahead and uh, get rid of this. Uh, so again, if you're new, a great place to start out is the live streams. Here's all the live streams. And then just on the regular part of the channel is all the playlists here. So you can check those out. And then for a little bit more organized, here's my art station page. And then this one has uh, some of the live streams and then also some goodies and then also the intro to ZBrush stuff. So if you're new to ZBrush, there's some good stuff in there for you. Um, but hold on just a second. I'll stay hydrated this morning. Um, so basically, how to get all of these awesome alphas into uh, a single brush, basically. So uh, we're going to go in here. We're going to grab a Polymesh 3D. And we're going to go into Alpha um, Import. And let's go ahead. I'm just going to grab. Let's go in here to Volume 2. And uh, we'll just grab an example uh, like this number 23. You can you can import multiple. You can go in here to import and you can import all of these. That's what I did, just import a whole bunch of them. Um, but you've got a bunch in here. So now I'm going to go in here to this alpha and we're going to say, uh, go grab our alpha menu. Oops. And drag it over here. And we're going to go in here to, well, there's two ways you can go about this. You can go in here to make 3D and you say, okay, I want it double-sided or not. I want the how deep it captures the alpha. Uh, the resolution usually I'll crank up and the smoothness I'll turn down, just not all the way down, but down quite a bit, maybe like the two. And then you can just hit make 3D, it'll go through and process your uh, selected alpha into a 3D. It can sometimes be a little hit or miss, you know, depending on your values. So in this case, miss, uh, no big deal. We can say delete all. Another option is to have that alpha loaded. Uh, and again, that's just going into the alpha palette and saying, okay, number 23, and then go in here and say to mesh. And that'll just transfer it to a mesh. It's going to capture it to a little square. Um, but what you can do is you can go through here. You can hold down control shift. Two ways you can do this. Control shift and slice. You can just slice, you know, towards the back. And then control shift tap here. And that'll kind of get rid of that background. Um, in this case, it's a little thin. So you got to be careful when you're slicing and get it close. Another option. And this one, well, this one may not work because it's not a it's not a closed mesh. You could use a Boolean and kind of push it forward and get rid of that plane. Uh, but again, it's a closed mesh. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase that height just a little bit and then give myself a little bit more breathing room, I think. And then we can just go through here and again, just slice that background off, control shift, tap, geometry modified topology, delete hidden. And now you've got this alpha converted to geometry. Now it's heavy. It's 1.69 million. So what we need to do is go in here to Z plugin, decimation master, uh, pre-process current and oh well, before we do that hit escape that'll abort it uh, go down here to geometry mesh integrity fix mesh 
Uh, there you go. And that will stop it. So we'll go ahead and pre-process current. Doing that's going to stop, you know, when it goes through and analyzes the mesh, it'll take it a bit and then it'll go through and write it out to a file and it'll say like re reconstructing or something like that. And it can sometimes hang in that state. Uh, doing the fixed mesh will make sure there's no non-manifold geometry uh, that'll, that the, the plugin will hang on. So we'll give this a minute. And then you, you'll see when it converted the alpha, it's not like a, you know, it, it almost looks decimated here, um, but the result it gave us is very high. So I'm just gonna basically decimate it down to the original state, and that'll allow me to have cheaper geometry to put a hundred of these pieces of geo into one single brush and not have it be a, you know, a four gig brush file. It'll be like a 36 meg brush file, which isn't terrible. So we're going to go in here to K polys and we're going to say, I don't know, say 50, enter, hit decimate current. And nothing really changed on my end. It looks about the same. If you want to push it a little bit and say, hey, let's try 20K, just do 20 decimate current. And it looks fine. So this is totally fine. It's already named 23, which is great. And then I just go on to the next one, which again, just to kind of run through it real quick, we're going to say, go grab a poly mesh because uh, we don't want to convert this or anything. So we're just going to go back to this one. I don't know if it'll convert it, but I'm going to assume it does. Uh, go back, select that alpha, and then back in our alpha to mesh. There we go. If you want to pop it out a little bit, you can. Go in here and slice the little background off here. Control shift tap, geometry modified topology, delete hidden. Uh, and I usually set up hotkeys for this when I'm doing a lot of this. Fix my mesh, okay. And then pre-process current. It'll go through and process and then just decimate it down. Um, this one's going a little bit faster, which is nice. And then I'll show you after this. Boop, 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 boop. Okay, okay. And then we'll just say, uh, I don't know, we'll try 10 on this one, decimate current. That's probably fine. We can also maybe stick with 20. There we go, perfect. So now we have uh, 66 and 23. You can put these all in one brush, just go in here and say append, and then just start appending, boop, 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 all of them into one uh, mesh here. So once you're done with that, delete all, delete all. Uh, we'll go in here and I will take, uh, do, 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 where was I, it was working and working. Now the next part, I think I remember all the steps for what I wanna do. You're gonna get these all into one file and then uh, you'll convert these to brushes. Cool. Um, something about France? Uh, <laughs> I don't speak French. Um, I'm assuming that's what that is. I wish I did. That'd be awesome if I was, if I could speak anything other than uh, the amount of English that I speak, which is middling. Um, can you tell me why you deleted the Gambison quilt video? Did I, was that me? Did I make one? We can make one today. I don't know that I've made a Gambison quilt video. You might be confusing me with a, a better YouTube streamer. I'm dealing with the Unreal Engine 5. Have you ever tried importing ZBrush to UE5 or as usual practice goes? Uh, I don't take anything wholesale into UE5 generally because usually what I take into UE5 goes onto a skeleton um, and skeletons have to move. And I don't know that a, a nanite mesh is going to move real well on a skeleton. Um, Environment art, I might consider that, but I don't do a ton of that. So no, I haven't done that. Um, but usually I'll go, yeah, Max Maya Moto Blender Cinema 4D. I'll run it and process it through there first because it's got to go on a skeleton and it's got to be somewhat optimized to move around. Um, cool. All right, so uh, yeah, I, we can make a Gambison quilt. Um, I mean, you know, I did, I did, I made a comforter. Is that what you're talking about? Similar. You talking about these things? It's kind of a gambeson. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, okay, so anyway, so we've done that process, right? And we've done it for a hundred alphas. And now we've converted those hundred alphas into a bunch of meshes. Um, so what I can do is I'm going to go to this top one here and we're going to say D -d 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 deformation unify and then go to repeat to other, and that's gonna fit everything within a, uh, you know, a zero to one bounding box base, or just the square, the default ZBrush cube, it's gonna put them all here. They're also gonna be facing the same way. So if I go into solo mode, let's go to the top one, just hit, use my down arrow key. You're gonna see we're just gonna cycle through all of these. 
so we're in good shape. Now, if I want to turn this, there's two ways you can go about this. We've, we can convert these to alphas uh, and we're good to go. You can also just have these as meshes. If you wanted to just drag this mesh onto uh, a surface, you can do that. Now it's only going to be, it's going to be single sided. So not my favorite thing in the world. Um, we could go through here and make it double sided. Uh, we could try to close holes. Well, this is a pretty complex shape, so it might be tough. But if you wanted to make an IMM, whole point of this is if you wanted to make an IMM brush out of this, uh, this part's a little bit easier. You can go in here to B, create, insert, multi mesh, um, and it'll go through and create an IMM brush with all of your pieces in here. So if you wanted to hit M on your keyboard and go grab something and then drag it out, you can. So now you can just go through here and you can drag out all your ornamentation that you'd like. And uh, you can go through here if you want to flatten it out. You can take your Z intensity down and it'll drag out a flatter version. Um, and if this isn't intense enough for you, you can go in here to your brush here, A, B, your brush. Um, what are we looking for here? Modifiers and then uh, strength multipliers. So we can turn this up to like two. And then when you drag this out, it'll be a little more oomph or three, four, five, whatever you want to do. Uh, another thing too, as you'll see, it's not sticking to a surface. So we say make poly mesh 3D and then go in here and just run our geometry crease and then hit D for dynamic and then maybe hit apply and then go down here and say delete lower. Uh, so if I want to wrap this thing on here, you see it's kind of flat. That's where you want to go into projection strength and crank that up. And then as you drag it, it'll kind of stick to that surface. So now we can go through here and do our little, little degree. If you want to um, make this the same size, you can hold down as you're dragging out, just hold down control and that'll snap it to your brush size. So um, yeah, fun, fun, right? Uh, like start dragging and then hold down control and there you go. So now you've got those deets. Uh, so this is an IMM brush. If I want to save this, um, what are we looking at here? That's my working file. Uh, we have our brush here and they're just named, they're named, they're going to name whatever uh, your subtool is. So if these aren't descript enough for you, feel free to rename them and remake it. Uh, this ornamental brush thing here, I don't need. So we're going to go in here to brush create. Nope brush uh, modify no it should be what am I looking? oh this is alpha not brush uh, brush create uh, delete mesh and there we go this one's cleaned up we'll go ahead and save this brush as an IMM brush so this would be ornamental brush volume this is volume two um, we'll call it IMM there we go. So now that's an IMM brush. Now, now we want to convert these pieces of geometry into a multi-alpha brush. So let's go grab a multi-alpha brush. So B uh, chisel rect, I think, is a uh, geometry multi-alpha brush. You see all this geometry is being converted to alpha on the fly. So I can just drag it onto a surface and I can just very quickly pick an alpha using this up here or hitting M on my keyboard and grabbing an alpha, which is actually selecting a piece of geo and converting it to an alpha. Um, so I'm going to go through here. I'm just going to grab the second one here and we're going to say delete mesh out of here and we'll get rid of all these because it's going to have the settings that I like, like the focal shift down to negative 100, um, Z add turned on, all that stuff. And there might be some fancier stuff in there. Um, now, when you get down to the last one, it'll automatically, because you only have one in there, it'll get rid of this top bar because you can't select multiple. So it's not going to show you the top bar. Now, here's the tricky part, um, at least for me, because I don't really remember what I'm doing, but I have a feeling if we do from mesh, it'll go ahead. There you go. So we have this one selected and we have a hit from mesh and it'll throw this mesh up here. And now when I select between these two, it'll select that alpha for me. So now uh, what I'm going to do is hold down control alt and then tap from mesh and assign that to, I don't know, alt five. Uh, it's not being used. So now I can just do alt five. So uh, if I hit the down arrow key and then do Alt-5, it'll throw it up uh, in there. So again, down arrow, Alt-5, down arrow, Alt-5, and just do that a hundred times. And that'll go ahead and throw all these meshes into my brush. And again, if these aren't decimated down, you may want to even check that. I didn't check it uh, and now I'm too far in, uh, but definitely check. I'll show you how you can check it kind of quickly. It's going to throw things out of order, um, but you can just reload your working file and um, you should be good to go. Let's see. Uh, okay. Alt five. 
sorry, this is super boring, but sometimes you got to do a little bit of super boring stuff to get something working. And then it'll speed you up later. So five minutes now will save me hours of time later on. I'm assuming it'll work. I haven't really tested these, so there may be some settings I have to kind of play with. Alphas get a little bit weird with mid values and stuff, so I don't know. We'll see. One, getting there, almost to the end. There we go. So now, uh, let's go back. Uh, let's just grab a sphere, I suppose. Make poly mesh 3D, hit control D a bunch of times, which will subdivide this up. And then, um, oh, this gear one we don't need anymore. So we'll just go back in here and we'll just say delete mesh. And now we have this one. And this is again, as we're cycling through these pieces of geometry, it's going to automatically select. So um, yeah, any number of these, you can drag these out. And if it's too much for you, of course, that's when you go back in here to your Z intensity, you can turn that down. Uh, you can go even negative, so it's the sub on here and one thing to remember is if you're going in here and you're like okay what's the perfect intensity oh whoops i gotta go to z add and then what's the perfect intensity oh it's too much i'm gonna turn this down a little bit remember if you make a stroke you can so we'll go ahead and put a alpha stroke on here you can go into adjust last and then go in here and just very quickly kind of dial in oh i want it to go sub or i want it to go out or i want it to go way out um, you have a little bit of leeway there um you can also with that uh, so we have, we've done multiple things. We've done one, two, three. We can go back on our history, one, two, three. Control tap that point in history, go forward, and then when you do adjust last, it'll adjust all three of those last uh, strokes on there. Of course, you can also be doing this all on a layer and we'd be recording that while you're doing it on a layer so you have total control over every single stroke you do on that layer. Mix that with morph targets if you want even more control to kind of brush stuff out or brush stuff in. Um, I'll leave it up to you, but uh, that's just a quick one. That's a quick, easy one there. So yeah, that worked. So we'll go ahead and say delete all. And then for this one, uh, again, these are just our working files. Um, nothing special there, just a bunch of sub tools. And then for this brush that we have selected, we can go in here to brush, save as, and we can save this one as uh, uh, da, 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 ZBP. Um, that was our IMM brush, right? And we should have called that volume two. No, wait, IMM brush. I think that's something different. Okay, I, did, I didn't save my original one. So we'll call this um, ornament volume two alphas. And then go back to our other brush that I guess we didn't save. Am I crazy? Did we? I mean, it's easy enough to recreate. I'm just kind of surprised. Um, oh, there it is, our insert mesh brush. So this is our, this one, you know, we select these up here and it's not converting to alpha. These are just pure IMMs. Let's go in here to brush, save as. And again, we'll just throw that into ZBrush 2022, ZBrushes. Uh, I'm not gonna use this all the time. So I'm just gonna put it into a folder uh, that we're gonna have volume two. IMM brush preset. Okay, so I can just load those up. All I got to do in that case is go into my comma key, go into the brush here, go to the end where all my underscore folders are, and somewhere in here is an ornamental ABC uh, element O in here, and then now I've got uh, brushes in here that I can pull from that we just made. So anyway, go back over here real quick. Uh, what's the best for detailed results? Reality capture or meta shape? Um, oh boy, it's been a while since I've done that stuff. Uh, I don't think it's on. So here's my photogrammetry playlist. I've used both of them in here. Of course, these are this is a really old video, but there is some basics in here that may or may not be useful to you. But um, yeah, it's been a long time. Um, uh, cool. All right. So what we say we were going to do, we had some fiber mesh stuff and then some sci-fi stuff. Let's go in here to delete all. Oh, I can load up. Do I have? Yeah. I, oh, nope. Hold on. Uh, let's go in here to more run. 
I'm gonna open up Quadro here and see if I can't open a, uh, where's that? Some reference here. So we can do some sci-fi stuff if it'll open. Sometimes on really heavy files, it has a hard time. If I can't get it to work, I'll just remake it real quick. Not a huge deal. There it goes. Okay. Um, so Warhammer stuff. It's just kind of looking at detailed stuff. So we'll go ahead and load that up. Um, I wish I had the file I was working on. Okay. Um, ZBrush. Uh, that's not the right one. Let's go in here to high res without all the stuff on it. <clears throat> and uh, we'll do some sci-fi stuff. Let me move this back to the front so I can so I can see here and scroll all the way down to the bottom. Uh, Quadro I like if I have a bunch of stuff on my screen um, that I don't want to have something in front of. Like if I'm juggling, um, you know chat windows and stuff like that i like the because prf is just a board so i have to it kind of blocks a lot of stuff um so quadro in that case all right so uh here's our little guy here and we go ahead and turn on oh, i guess everything is on so what is a good place um where i would like to go in and just kind of ham a little bit here uh his chest it's kind of a little bit lackluster. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything that would be cool. His arms are definitely lackluster. You could probably redo those. Uh, this chest right here. Okay, let's let's start. Um, the bodysuit kind of bugs me a little bit. So let's go in here and say, uh, we'll go ahead and delete that and delete that. And I'm gonna fill this part out a little bit. So I'm gonna hold down shift and bent uh, down arrow just to shoot these to the bottom here. We're gonna fill in this little cavity right here. So we're gonna go ahead and hide all both of these. Merge this together. Uh, we'll go ahead and say dynamic apply under geometry dynamic and then if we go in here I'm going to isolate just this interior um, poly group and we're just going to squeeze these together this is going to be kind of weird um, let's also take oops this one got a little bit messed up let's say grab this one here um, let's hold down control shift Let's turn on X symmetry, control shift, and just grab these edges out of here. I don't need these extra edges. Hit control W. There we go. So now I can just grab this one here, isolate, invert. And again, we're just going to squeeze these together because what we're going to do is we're going to redo this entire midsection that's bothering me. So we're going to go through here and we're going to say resolution down a little bit, dynamesh this together. Go into your move brush with back face masking on. So underneath brush, auto masking, there's a little back face button you can turn on. I have a hockey assigned to that, so now when I go in here and use move, it just kind of moves the down part there. So now control drag, and uh, we can even go in here. We can hit control W to make this all one poly group, and then polish. Uh, a polish you don't need to do with one poly group, but polish by features you would. And then we'll just go ahead and kind of polish that up. So now we have the entire midsection ready to go. So now we're in like concept phase. So if I go out of solo mode, turn everything back on. Now we got a whole entire midsection uh, that we can kind of play with. Um, and there's a couple things that he, he set up, like a, a lot of my reference was toy reference. Um, so if I want to make any major proportion changes, which I would want to do, and as he's kind of leaning forward a little bit. Um, so what I would do is luckily, I think I have, uh, yeah. So I got the helmet stuff all in one uh, sub tool here. Let's go ahead and grab, um, I have this kind of sitting at the top as just a name catcher. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and duplicate that off. I'm gonna shoot it down, and then I'm gonna put this into the uh, helmet folder, just so it kind of scales along with it. So here's my helmet. I'm gonna say transpose set W. Go ahead and stick this, um, the bottom of his neck here. We can just kind of scale this down a little bit. Um, that feels a little bit better uh, for a Warhammer character than the, the bigger toy head. Um, what else? These things kind of bug me a little bit, but we'll, 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 we'll stay, we'll stay in the midsection area. We'll have a little bit more fun there. Um, also he does taper a little bit more than I'm, I guess it's not too terrible. 
and then uh, these belt things. This, this whole thing needs an overhaul. It's it's okay, uh, but it's not great. Uh, so anyway, uh, let's say we wanted to do maybe a little bit of a cooler midsection, and I'm just kind of looking around and see if anything jumps out at me. And I'll pull the reference down if I see something like this is a kind of a cool midsection that I like. Um, anything else jumping out at me? We'll do something a little more like that that's a little bit more, uh, I don't know, a little more poppy. So, um, and again, I'm going to play it fast and loose with this. I can always go back to my original file and juggle things around. So if you see me doing stuff like this where I'm just like, hey, you know what? You could put all, you could merge all these things together. This is a ton of subtools in here. So you could put them in folders and hide them if you want to do uh, anything mass into a folder. And if you also want to kind of clean up what you're working on, if you want to focus in on stuff, you can see, okay, we turn out the helmet, turn out the backpack. Um, we can put all these packs in the one folder. One easy way to do that, let's go ahead and hold down control and turn off whatever's stored in history. Uh, we can go through here and just control shift. Uh, well, first of all, hit W, move multiple turned on, control shift drag over multiple sections, and then control shift alt to unhash them. And then once you've done that, uh, you can go through here and I think we've got everything, all those little packs unhashed and they're kind of alone. Oh, and we also have this little bone holder thing, which I think we can put all that together. So we'll go ahead and select that. Yeah, that's fine. We'll call it like uh, belt accessories or something. So we'll hit control F for folder, say yes, and we'll say belt accessories. And then I can just go and turn those off and then we'll turn off, move multiple, we'll select something else. And now all those belt accessories are just kind of stashed away. Now, uh, and all this stuff too. Yeah, we'll just redo this. Like this is kind of meh. So we'll go ahead and say delete that. That's a good enough back play. Uh, you know, it's fine. Delete that. Again, I think I was using a lot of toy reference. So we'll kind of revamp this. This thing we can recreate. Deleted. And uh, this little thing is obviously easy enough to recreate. So uh, he's got a nice little taper in here. Let's, let's go ahead and widen them out a little bit here. And you know what? Let's go ahead and, because it's bug bugging me, uh, let's go back here, let's hold down shift and turn on all my eyeballs. And then we'll go back in here to our helmet uh, just so everything's showing. And then again, move multiple. I'm gonna make sure we're down the middle, we are. Control shift, everything's hashed. I'm gonna take his entire upper body here and then with his arms. And then with all this, this can stay, I believe. And then we're just going to go boop, 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 and just tilt this back a bit. Not that much. Uh, sorry, it's a little bit slight. You know, I have dynamic turned on. I should probably turn that off. We'll maybe even move this back just a hair. All right. Um, and now, yeah, it's fine. This helmet's still facing forward. You could go back into the helmet and then move it forward. And then this is just my name catcher. You know what? We'll go ahead and say, I like to have just an insert little star here, take this head, delete it out of our scene. We can take this name catcher slash something without, turn off move multiple, let's throw it right into the chest here, and that'll just kind of be chilling there with its um, visibility off, and that'll just catch the name. Okay, so midsection here, let's go in here with our clay buildup brush, and we'll go ahead and just kind of mass this out just a little bit more. And since we're working low res and I have my smooth brush set to smooth stronger but automatically, I'm going to hold down shift and turn down my um, turn down my uh, let's go ahead and delete that, we don't need that. My smooth intensity. So we got a little skull here and we have a little midsection and we'll just kind of make something a little bit cooler than just Michelin man tubes that I think we did last time. It's easy to do. You just go through and slice and panel loops and stuff, but not overly interesting. So for example, and that's got like tubes and stuff on it. That's totally cool. So, um, and I don't know the lore of, uh, and again, we're just kind of looking at this midsection here. I don't know exactly if this is uh, kosher, I suppose, for some of the, the models that I'm making, but hey, we're just having fun. So, uh, it's going good. Sorry, get back up here and we'll move this back up. Uh, yeah, I guess this is fine. I kind of want to keep this here. Sorry. Um, when you're doing characters like that and you need to rig them, how would you go about making uh, muscles and soft areas feel natural when bent? Uh, you just, at the end of the day, 
you want enough geometry there so when you especially when you're doing game development stuff because um, generally speaking you're not going to have like a muscle sim and bones and skin sliding <laughs> all running in a, in a you know at 60 frames a second uh, so basically you just want to put enough edge loops and again you got to be frugal so you want to put enough edge loops so when you bend something uh, you you have you give the rigging department or you enough room to maneuver I guess I can show you for example let's do a quick save and then uh, if we grab a man this is it shouldn't be that big oh you know what do we have we have the ornamentation thing in here that's taking up some space delete all we don't need that in there anymore uh, we can go back to that so uh, we have this and then we're gonna do oh, we have we don't need this anymore either delete all um, what were we doing? Oh yeah, cylinder here. And uh, before we make it a polymesh 3D, we'll go in here and initialize V divides all the way down. And we'll say make polymesh 3D. And then uh, we can go through here with our Z modeler brush, insert multiple edge loops, keep poly group, and we'll just kind of put one right down the middle. And then if I want to, you know, this is a finger, go through here and say, okay, I want to bend this finger. So you, this is like, painting weights and you're going to bend the finger and it's going to do this because there's just not enough geometry. Um, if you go through here and we say, okay, let's bevel edge loop complete. We have a little bit more resolution here. Uh, we can go through here and then we can say, okay, let me bend this finger. And it's still, still not great, right? So you just got to keep going in here. And again, you don't want to put in just extraneous geometry, but you know, now, uh, you know, we can start, you can start seeing, oh, we can bend something and maintain volume essentially. Uh, so in that instance, maybe one more here and then control W, control alt here. And then, uh, and again, it's, it's not like I can wait. I mean, I guess I could with Z spheres, but you would have a fall off, you know, as you're bending something, you're going to have enough geometry that would, uh, you know, you're doing your weights here. You would have enough geometry to kind of support a knuckle or an elbow or anything like that. You can, as something's bending, you can maintain that volume uh, with geometry that you have. So that's, that's the basics of it. As far as like, you know, building in, you know, going around the knuckle or building in pecs or shoulders. Um, I don't, I don't know that that's that useful all the time. Uh, long story short I I think most most rigging people that I talk to is keeping it simple uh, you know having basically concentric rings that they can easily select and make uh, assign, you know waiting assignments to and then giving them enough geometry and in key areas so that it can uh, bend is that's that's the kind of the the low low level uh, information and then past that it gets it can kind of get a little bit more. Uh, in depth as far as like where you put your star geometry on a face or you know like I said building in edge loops and, and again it's been a while but like usually edge loops would be it's kind of hard to explain uh, especially on this model but um, I guess I can just draw it wouldn't be that terrible uh, also it's this should be funny. So let's go in here. Uh, let's see, make this a little bit bigger. New layer. So for example, um, we've got a, a chest in here and then we've got our rib cage and then we've got our soft, soft parts of our body. And then we've got our, um, crotch area and then we've got our legs and stuff right uh, and then our clavicle and then our neck and then our head so when you're gonna you know do an an arm or a finger it's basically concentric rings uh, like this and then if you need a few more rings in the elbow area so when it bends you can pop a little uh, bend in there and you can sculpt this out and you can not sculpt it but you know change your weighting to sculpt it out or you can do corrective blend shapes um, post based deformer stuff but geometry needs to be there in order for you to do that um, and then in here where it gets a little bit trickier, I suppose is, and again, it's been a, it's been a minute since I've worried about this stuff, but, uh, since we usually have base mesh with all this stuff built in, but in this area, the geometry would more follow like a little, and it's like a Jeff Unai 
God, my, uh, this is old school stuff. This is, I don't know that anything's really changed tremendously since then, but this is kind of the edge flow that you'd be working with as far as like getting this area. It wouldn't be like, oh, let me model in this deltoid and model in this deltoid and model in, you know, this peck separation all through here. It would basically be like, no, just put a blanket of quads that kind of go this direction and then down and then kind of just allow you to get huge range of motion from your shoulders you know down the rest of the body is is that kind of thing uh generally speaking i mean there may be instances where you would want to model that in but then you start getting into like you know muscle sims and stuff like that that might give you a little bit more control and that all that stuff too it doesn't necessarily mean like the muscle sim has to run real time you can maybe bake that information to joints and then it could run be performance so it's not a deal breaker it's just again we're getting a little out of my um knowledge area for sure um done with subdued modeling or sculpting before applying all the decals and ornaments uh yeah it was mostly subdued modeling if you want to watch it uh again the big blue genie here i didn't really advertise this one because i was assuming i was going to finish it and not just leave it in a unfinished state but here's warhammer 40k base model part one and base model part two through there you can kind of follow along and make your own if you'd like um cool yeah. And uh, yeah, I would say, uh, honestly, like the bigger pieces, it, well, and you know what, we'll talk about that right now. So basically how I'm going to uh, go about making more of a complex uh, kind of shape. And a lot of it might start with sculpting and then convert it to Z remesh and then go to the Z modeler, or it might start with Z modeler. Or it might just stay a sculpt uh, the entire time. We'll just kind of have to play with it. So uh, we'll go through here and I guess we could just make that. That might be kind of a, just a cool little chest area, belt area, just to kind of make. Um, if I did want to do that, I'd have to go track that image down. So texture import, and we just kind of overlay it. And that might be kind of fun, just as another thing we could talk about. Um, let's see. Reference. Uh, where's that chest area? Is it extra large icons? Because my eyes are going. This one, no. This one, yes. Grab it. Texture. Grab it. Add it to your spotlight. We'll scale it up because this is the area we're working on. We'll put this down a little bit. So now, um, and I wish I had, you know what, let me open up my mirror board. I might actually be able to link back to. So here's my mirror board of stuff uh, for the Warhammer stuff. And then in here, okay, what I'll use, oh yes, perfect. So what I'll do is I'll, you know, in Miro, I can go through here and you can also use this as a reference board, which is neat. And if you want more, <laughs> if you want more information on Miro, here's a whole playlist on Miro and doing cool stuff in there. So check that out. Um, anyway, so this here, I have a little link. So I can click this link and we can go to the page and uh, it's an Enwo. So let's link you. I can link you straight to the source here. Awesome, awesome concept artist here. There you go. Let's go check that out. Let's click that link. So we've got that in here. And uh, again, we can riff a little bit. doesn't have to match this exactly. Uh, but if you did want to, this is how you could go about it. And we'll go ahead and let that quick save here. So we're just going to kind of match. And I'm not going to get into like, you know, you can go in here to perspective and you can bring in you know, you can use like the reference viewer plugin, uh, ref switcher plugin that I've used a bunch of times on my live streams. Uh, but in our case, we're just going to keep it simple and just, um, just kind of get the body about the same here. So there's basically the chest. And then again, we're just going to be kind of working on this midsection. I'm, I'm using this skull right here as an indication of where my midline is on my model. And if you see little holes in your reference, just tap Z and go in here to intensity and then just crank to the right a little bit. That'll turn your blacks into very dark grays and get rid of those transparent holes. Because anything in ZBrush that's pure black is going to default to alpha in some instances. So if we got this set up where we like it, I'm going to go in here to movie timeline show and we're going to put a little dot in there by just by tapping. If you accidentally tap wrong just drag that dot out of there and then tap again uh, so now if i move my model around i can go back and then snap use my arrow keys to snap back so right off the bat we can say hey let's make this skull a little bit bigger boom there we go and then uh, back here we'll just alt tap to go back to the body here 
And if we want to paint through here, so right now I can go in here and um, let's see, turn off that. We can go through here and we can sculpt through. Um, and you can even sculpt through and pick up detail as you're sculpting, but you got to go in here to your brush menu and go into samples and turn on spotlight projection. In this case, I'm going to go to B, B for brush, P for P brushes, and then uh, A for my paintbrush, which is basically just standard brush with RGB turned on and Z add turned off. And now you can literally paint the concept right on to your little midsection here. Uh, it's also painting across symmetry, so you can just paint half and the other half will duplicate over. Of course, this resolution is terrible because uh, we're just using Dynamesh. Uh, so in this case, what you could do is you can go through here and just Dynamesh at a higher resolution, just control drag, and then bring this back. Or you could subdivide if you wanted to. But So we'll just go ahead and this will be a foundation for you know what we might want to make. And now we have a, a better idea of where stuff uh, can gonna go. And you can just pull, you can start pulling plates off of here. A bunch of different ways you go about doing that. Um, for example, uh, and there's also stuff you can do that you, that can be flat. So instead of modeling something curved, like it's you know it's curving on his body, you can actually just take this and model it out flat first. So if we wanted to do that, uh, we could say, um, let's go ahead and I'm just going to go into my custom brush here that has a, a plane here. So we're just going to drag this plane on here. Um, or if we wanted to be perfectly flat, just go in here and append a, a plane 3D. That'll automatically convert it to a, a poly mesh. So we don't need to worry about that. And then with that plane selected, since we appended it, it went to the bottom. So we can just kind of move this plane into place here. Doesn't have to be perfect because we're just going to change it anyway. We'll hit Control D uh, a couple times just to get the resolution up. So when we paint on it, Control D, Shift Z to turn that back on. Um, X symmetry turned on. And then uh, RGB. Or use your paintbrush. Um, it's kind of at an angle, and I don't know exactly, and all we really need is that back part here, so this is fine. And we can kind of, um, so there it is painted just on a flat plane, and we want to go through and rebuild this. So let's go in here and say delete lower, and you can zero mesh this. In this case, the, the shape is simple enough. We can just go to BTO for a topology brush, and I deleted lower so I can drag out curves on here. I'm even going to turn off X symmetry. I don't really need symmetry. Um, I'm just going to go through here and we can say, okay, this is the basic shape that I want. So we're just going to follow the shape around and then just go through here and uh, drag through and start connecting uh, these dots. So we're going to say an alt, alt drag will clean up your model. So as we go through here, we can just start connecting these pieces here. And we're going to go through here. And we're going to go through here. And then now we have, um, and again, anything I bring up, it's like topology brush, BTO. You can go in here in my YouTube channel, say, Topology brush, what is that? And then there will be a bunch of topology brush uh, videos you can watch. Um, or go to the What's New series and you can track down when the topology brush showed up. And then uh, that'll kind of be a linear walkthrough of those features. So if we like this, we can just tap off and we can say split mass points. And now we can kind of Z modeler uh, this thing. Um, if we need to clean this up a little bit, you can say Control Alt and you can just a uh, couple different ways. You can go through here and you can call Z scaling, although that's not really in the Z direction. Um, or you can even use your clip brush. You can hold down control shift and go in here to uh, clip curve and you can say let's grab these ones here and then just clip this back uh, like so. And now this is also symmetrical in the x-axis. So if we turn on our floor uh, with everything turned on you're going to see here's our midline. So if we want to do a geometry modified topology mirror and weld across the x it'll do that. Um, and then when you're modeling you can also turn on this local symmetry button, which is going to take in the local axis symmetry, not the world symmetry. Because if I have that off and I say, okay, also mirror and weld in the Y direction, which Y is up and down, and you do that in the world direction, it's going to put it down here. However, if you turn on local symmetry, it's going to look at the bounding box of these objects. And then when you do a mirror and weld in Y, it'll give you a mirrored uh, option here. It'll be mirrored across the bounding box locally. So transform activate symmetry in the X and Y direction. And then we can just kind of work on this uh, in the X and Y direction. And in fact, if I don't even need that thickness or I want to redo it, I can just control shift tap that polygroup, delete hidden. And then, you know, we can just extrude that later. So we've got our basic shape um, and you could have just extruded edges or put, brought in a box and squeeze some stuff down. It's a lot of different ways you can go about this. Um, so we'll go ahead and Z scale this back and good enough, right? Um, okay, what were we making? Okay, this thing. 
so this has a little bit of detail on it. It's got a kind of a little bit of inset geometry. So, and again, you could sculpt all this too. You don't have to jump in here to box modeling, but it's kind of a metallic-y shape. So we'll, we'll go ahead and do that. Again, go back in here, Q mesh, polygroup all, or extrude polygroup all. We'll give it a little bit of thickness. And then I want to inset it just a bit. So let's go in here to inset polygroup all legacy. And I'm just gonna pull in those corners a little bit. Good enough. And then we'll say Q mesh polygroup all, and then we'll hold down shift and pull that out. That'll kind of give us our little uh, bevel around here. And then uh, it kind of does have a little inset piece on here. Uh, we can steal geometry. And again, I'm just kind of looking at this. So there's our little bevel piece. And then this little inset piece here, uh, if we want to match it, we can again, kind of snap this back into place. It, it's on a plane, so it's not going to be perfect. Um, let's go ahead and tap here. So we can just kind of line this up. And again, this will just kind of keep us honest as to like where our geometry is. In fact, if we want to store a separate piece, we can just put a little extra little dot in there and this will just be the symmetry for just this piece. So, um, Right off the bat, I can see like, okay, this needs to maybe be scaled out just a bit. So we'll go to unmesh mesh center and then turn X symmetry back on. We'll kind of scale that out a bit. And then uh, that's all beveled in, so we're good to go. And then this piece over here is kind of a little bit extra. If you wanted to, and it is beveled all the way around, um, we can go ahead and say, let's take this one here and I'm gonna make this a little thinner. So I'm gonna pull that a little bit closer to the edge. And then I'm gonna go through here. We can say, hold down alt, and then paint, and then um, let's hit W, and then if we control tap this, let's see if I can't just bring that out. That brings out too much, sorry. Because um, right now, if I say Q mesh polygroup ball, it's gonna go out here. Um, so what we can do is I just wanna go straight out in this case. We're gonna alt drag over this middle section here, and we're we'll just gonna pull these straight out, and then uh, maybe not that much. And then we can, um, we can actually just collapse these back. So we can say collapse edge and just turn this into like a, a strip that kind of pops out a little bit. Um, if we want to straighten these out, we can. We do have X symmetry still turned on. So we're going to do it you know, across the X axis and uh, up and down direction. And that'll kind of be that. And we still maintain our bevels. And then this side over here, um, I'm just gonna say collapse this edge up. So that's kind of this. And then for these here, I'm gonna go ahead and let's say mask. Let's see if I can just do this real quick. Mask edge invert W and we'll just kind of scoot this over a little bit uh, just to have it a little bit fall off-y. Um, hmm, I'm not sure I'm in love with that, but we're okay. So then this whole section right here needs to have that little piece built out so I can actually borrow some geometry. I can go through here and I can cut in a bunch of edges on here, um, but I can also go in here to duplicate this off. And then we can say, just steal this geometry to use, delete hidden, and then uh, go out of solo mode. We can say, go to again, unmesh, mesh center, and then squeeze this down a little bit. And this will kind of be that little inset piece here. And then we can just say, Q mesh this out. Uh, this will give us a little bit more control. Uh, another method you could use, let me see. Hmm. You could Q-mesh this out and then collapse it back, but in this case, I kind of want to maintain that border, so we'll leave that alone for now. Uh, let's see, Control-Alt here, W. And if I just want to look at these two here, I can just have those on and just turn everything else off. So uh, I'll tap this one again, turn that on here. So now we got these two pieces. And again, I want to kind of inset this one a little bit. Um, again, you could, I mean, we could just do this inset polygroup all, just pull this back down again. And I can also go through here and I could say collapse poly loop and I can just collapse these back and that'll do kind of an inset thing there um, for that shape. And yeah, so that kind of goes through. And then uh, now it's just a matter of creasing. And in this case, I think our creases are gonna be fairly consistent, so that's good. Uh, so again, Control-Alt, I'm gonna kind of pull this whole side over a bit and uh, maybe it needs to be a little bit flatter so it's not competing on that depth with this piece here. 
and now you have you know that kind of built uh, piece here now for the for the little detail on the side that can be an IMM brush that we can create uh, it can also just be sculpted in if you really wanted to um, but I think you know we can keep it kind of separated so let's turn everything else back on and while we're doing that we don't need this plane anymore it's just kind of in the way and then we can say move these back a little bit if we want to move multiple we can say okay move multiple here push this back and again he's kind of got a pretty severe anterior tilt so I may change that a bit um, so I'm going to go ahead and keep this straight for now and same thing for this because we can always move this stuff we can we can curve it uh, later you know while we're working and then back here we'll say move these in and in fact we can just bridge these across so we can say hold down control alt and uh, we'll get rid of these here and then we'll go ahead and line these back up like so and then if we want to bridge those across we can just say bridge two holes u to u kind of span those across and then let's go ahead and just do a quick uh, group by normal geometry modified topology mirror and weld and that'll go ahead and give us uh, our new polygroups so um all right all right and then uh, for that decoration i want to say it kind of crosses over and repeats it might be easier just to kind of I don't know. There's a few different ways you can approach that. But as far as like the creasing part of this, we can just quickly go in here. Uh, I like to kind of look at my polygroups and crease those. So uh, let's go ahead and take our group by our polygroups is under geometry poly uh, geometry polygroups is where all this stuff is. Uh, it's in my custom menu too. But polygroups group by normals change that max angle down, and that'll give you uh, you know more polygroups. And then again, I'd like to do a quick geometry modified topology mirror and weld. And then, um, so now I can just do a quick crease PG. I know where my creases are. And now when I hit D for dynamic, it'll just show you what it's gonna look like dynamically subdivided. Then we just go through manually and just say, okay, let's crease this edge here. And it kind of maintains this. I'm gonna go ahead and crease that edge as well. And then this kind of smooths out. So I think something like that, and then these need to be creased. So D for dynamic. And then if we want a little bit of a fall off on those creases, We'll do, uh, and this is under geometry crease, by the way. So geometry crease and then dynamic subdivision is what we're playing with. So crease level here, smooth subdiv up here. So we'll say, you know, crease a level of three, uh, smooth subdiv of four, and that'll just kind of give you that little bit of a soft fall off uh, there. So something like that maybe is kind of what that is. And then same thing with this one. Um, and this one, we can just run a crease tolerance, I think, dynamic level of two smooth subdiv of three or something like that and uh just kind of dial that in um or if you do need to hold a crease in here you can just say you know what let's go ahead and just crease edge loop complete we'll just throw a crease in there and that'll kind of maintain that or you can put in control loops whatever you're whatever you'd like to do and then once this is all done um, that's when we can go in and we can kind of bend this around with a deformer and it's already pretty wide so let's go out of x symmetry shoot it to the middle and then we can just kind of um we can move multiple and we'll just pull this back into place here. Um, sorry, my original plane was got a little bit wonky there. Uh, and then, you know, like I said, temporarily, you can just merge these things together. And then we'll do Shift-D to turn dynamic off. And then we just very quickly go in here, mask pin here. And we can say, let me just um, move, turn off move multiple. We'll kind of move this uh, in. Just a bit so now it kind of lines up a little bit better with what we painted on there originally again which may be shortened um, but you know just play around with that if you'd like so there's the basic block out of that little section there and we can go ahead and say okay i'm going to actually take the skull here and shoot that down to the bottom and we can go ahead and say that's good enough blocked out yes yeah, so this one's a little bit thinner than it maybe should be so take that into consideration and then you're just basically going through and layering up and that was a simpler shape uh, again which you could box model um, zero mesh topology brush however you want to do that part there these ones are a little bit more complex we'll probably use zero measure to kind of simplify but um well let's see here um uh yes yeah exactly uh like like a boss says 
put be clever with where your edge loops are so when you go to move it or any uh, the best way to do it is just to make it throw bones in it start painting weights and uh bend it and you'll see really quickly uh where it where it holds up um necessary have a university degree be accepted in a game studio i don't in these days i don't think so i do have um in my blog here do I need a college degree? Again, I don't answer the question because it's a tough one to answer, but I'll link you to my blog there. And you can read about that. Um, cool, yeah. And uh, yeah, definitely uh, the, the, the 51 videos series, the getting started series is pretty, should be pretty linear, pretty straightforward. Uh, chain I can easily be controlled and modified where I can later apply textures with the noise maker. Um, yeah. Let's see if there's a, a chain opportunity here on the shoulder pad. Let's go ahead and say this shoulder here, for example, I'm going to go into solo here, control shift, and we're going to say split, uh, not delete hidden, split hidden. And then we're going to duplicate this shoulder off and I'm going to put something, something over here, maybe a big skull or a big plate with a insignia on it or something like that. So I've duplicated this off and we're going to say shift D. So it's just a geometry. I'm going to say, give me this geo right here and then isolate it. Geometry modified topology delete hidden. And this can kind of be a uh, Q mesh polygroup ball, kind of Q mesh this out. And um, again, we could just do a quick inset here with legacy turned on and then we could collapse this poly loop here to get that and then we can say uh, Q mesh and this is what I was trying to do C control tap here and then you can just control drag out uh, whatever direction you want to go as opposed to you know following the face normals um, so yeah something like this maybe and then you can scale this in or out or however you'd like to do that but anyway uh, we can even make its own poly group here uh, one easy way is hover over an edge, polygroup, polyloop here. And then we can say, you know, crease PG. Um, just run a crease on there. And now we've got this little piece here that we want to, I don't know, chain to his shoulder. Uh, so let's go out of edit mode here, control N. And then in order to make a chain that has UVs, so you can use those UVs later, uh, let's go in here to ring 3D. Um, don't make it a poly mesh yet. We're going to make it very simple. So we're going to say maybe eight and eight, uh, or maybe a little more than eight, maybe 12. There, hit W. Let's go in here and say make poly mesh 3D. Go into your gear icon, say extender, and we'll just kind of pull this out. And then we've got a basic chain link. We'll hit control W, uncrease all, and we'll say uh, deformation inflate. It's kind of thicken that chain out a little bit. So if we want this to be a repeating geometry, uh, let's go in here to Gizmo 3D, control drag out a copy, hold down shift, and then this will be our repeating chain links. And again, I'm gonna make these even thicker. Nice, thick Warhammer chains. So again, uh, B, create insert mesh new. And now we have an insert mesh brush. Of course, we want to apply this to a curve. Uh, you don't have to. If you just want to say W, control, drag out, and then just let go of control and just keep dragging out, you can make a chain. No problemo. Um, but in this instance, let's go in here to stroke um, curve, and then we'll turn on curve mode. However, before we do that, uh, these things need UVs. So we can go in here, Z plugin, UV master, um, if you needed UVs, if you're just going to put like um, the default surface noise on here, then you're fine. If you actually want UVs on these, then you'll need to go in here to, um, what were we doing? Z plugin, UV master. Uh, we'll just unwrap them. So now they have UVs. And then um, we'll do B, create insert mesh new so that we know these things, uh, this this latest insert mesh brush has UVs on it. Now the caveat to that is if we go back to our model here and we drag out our IMM brush or our curve brush on something that doesn't have UVs, um, it's not going to maintain those UVs. So let's do um, Shift D. Let's again go back into Z plugin UV master. We'll say polygroups, unwrap. So now this piece has UVs. So just to test this out, uh, let's go in here to and again, I think I'm right, but it's been a long, I don't generally do this. Uh, texture map, let's throw on a texture here. 
okay, it has UVs. And then if I go in here and insert a brush, it'll maintain my UVs. And then I believe if I go in here to curve mode um, and then under brush modifiers, we don't need uh, triparts turned on in this case. So now as we're dragging out this chain, it should maintain your UVs. Um, there's probably some settings you need to play with here. So it would be like um, underneath stroke, curve step, maybe 0.8. And then I'll kind of put those a little bit closer together. There we go. So now they're kind of linked together, maybe a little bit more, 0.76. There we go. So now we've got chains that have UVs um, that I can use for whatever. Uh, now, of course, IMMs can sometimes be difficult to kind of stick to certain areas. Um, so in this case, if I wanted to go from certain, you know, point to point, I might go in here and use, oh, you're gonna have to, if you're framing a mesh, that mesh would have to have UVs too. It's not a deal breaker, just something to consider. Um, so in this case, we would go in here to like say, insert a sphere and then take this sphere here. And we'll say E so we can scale it down and hit W to move it up. And then again, if I wanna do kind of a complex thing, we could say, okay, where does this, go so it's going to go from here Q hold down shift as you're dragging out so that it's the same size not totally you don't have to do that uh, there's a plugin that will make them all the same size for you but yeah whatever so you can go through here and you can use uh, there I'll show you another thing that you can use too but um, if you wanted to have a very complex shape or you know how this attaches and then attaches again uh, in one fell swoop, you could do that. So with uh, Z-spheres. So we're just hitting Q and then W to move uh, these Z-spheres into place. Now I'm gonna use this as a path for my chain. Uh, right now it's not a very complex chain. So underneath our transform, nope, our stroke menu, there's a curves helper. You can say uh, copy the Z-sphere chain and then you can say uh, create a curve. Um, However, since this doesn't have UVs and you create a curve and then you use your chains with UVs on it, I don't think it's gonna maintain your UVs. So on that instance, what I might do is go down here to adaptive skin, density down, dynamesh resolution down, hit preview, nice easy mesh, right? Uh, go ahead and say make adaptive skin. It's gonna shoot it out here in your palette. We'll say insert skin Z sphere. We don't need the Z sphere anymore. So we'll just go ahead and delete it out of our scene. And then we'll hit control W, make this all in poly group. I'm gonna get rid of these caps here and here, geometry modified topology, delete hidden. We only need two polygroups on here, so hold hover over an edge of the Z model brush, polygroup, poly loop, U and U, isolate, delete hidden, let's make this more obvious. There we go, two distinctly different uh, polygroups here. Now, important part for the surface noise part of this is again, Z plugin, unwrap, so that now when we say, I think it'll work, functions, uh, frame your polygroup border. This is underneath your stroke menu, it's curve functions, polygroups, frame mesh. Go back to your chain brush with your UVs, and then you can tap here and make these as large as you'd like. And again, just to make sure that this is working, let's go in here to texture map. Okay, good. So we're maintaining our textures. We're using this to frame our mesh. We're going down here to depth brush depth and we'll embed this so that it just kind of goes through the middle there and then if we don't need you're going to see to get rid of this curve you can just kind of tap away from the curve or you can go into curve functions delete and then this is actually masked out if we turn texture off you'll see this little strip originally is just masked you can go into visibility hide point control shift drag and then geometry modify topology delete hidden or you can go into subtool split and you can say split hidden and then delete the subtool whatever you want to do so now you have uh, chains with UVs, yay. Uh, so now you can use your UVs with surface noise. Now, like I said before, if we just hit D for dynamic, if you go into surface noise and you're just using the default noise, you can skip all the UV steps. You don't need to use UVs if you're just gonna use basic, um, like surface noise like this you're fine, you don't need to worry about UVs. However, if you're gonna do surface noise like this, 
where you want to use your UV. So we'll say weave and we'll say mix basic noise down to zero. Uh, plug and scale. Let's see strength. Boy, this one's touchy, huh? Um, plug and scale. What am I looking at? What scale? What scale? Um, let's turn off. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know if it's because of the scale of the chains or what, but I can't dial in. Okay, there we go. There we go. That was my fault. So this is a very small amount. So uh, if you want to use your UVs with these and not have it planar projected, let's turn that strength way down. There we go. So we're kind of doing a, I don't know why you'd want to make a carbon fiber <laughs> weave on your chains here. Um, and then again, the plug-in scale something like this. So in this instance, we could say, don't use 3D, use my UVs for this. Ah, oh, there we go. And now the plug-in scale needs to go up a little bit. Now we can use our UVs to wrap, and then now, you know, you can have whatever based on your UVs. Oh, sorry about that. Um, that was a weird one. It's been a while since I've done that stuff. Um, okay, so, okay. Uh, you can mask by color. So back to here, um, I don't know if it'll pick up these colors really well. You can actually go in here to a um, couple different ways to mask by color. Uh, but in here underneath poly paint, you can say, hey, you know what? I want to, let's alt tap this one. Uh, we want to adjust my colors. So in here, let's say I want to go in here and say, hey, you know what? I want to bump up that intensity. It looks a little drab. So we can just go in here and bump up that uh, intensity and that contrast maybe. And say okay and now it'll just kind of pop that detail for you you can also go in here and you can say um, underneath masking you can say you know mask by color and there is like mask by intensity and hue and saturation but in this case you say mask by poly paint you can just drag over here and then we can say um, you can blur your mask you can invert the mask you can change your tolerance so how much of that blue it grabs and then um, you can also you know once that's masked you can go back in here to your Actually, you wouldn't even need to go back in here if we just go in here to adjust colors. Anything that's masked will go ahead and just mask for you. Um, or even while you're in poly paint mode, so poly paint adjust colors, you can just mask while you're in here. So you can say, okay, I just want to change all my blues to a different color. So we're going to say, um, bring that tolerance up. We're going to say, turn off inverse mask. No, wait, yeah, we do want to invert that mask. And then now we can go through here and we can hue shift the blues to, you know, whatever color you want, so. Yes and yes. Um, apply the projection so it follows the model again. So in this case, um, you can use, there's a couple different methods you can use. One is like matchmaker brush that you can use. Um, but in this particular case, what I'd probably do is, um, you know, so we wanna match the model again, I would make sure that the gizmo is following the mesh, which if it's just something bizarre, remember you can just alt tap a uh, surface normal and it'll follow that normal here and then we can go in here and do like a um, bend arc in this case is probably good enough so then you can just go through here and you say okay grab this one and we can just kind of bend it back and then take the radius and shrink it down just a little bit and then that'll just match you can just eyeball it into place basically um, like I said before there's also a matchmaker brush like BMM is matchmaker and then you just you set your camera angle and then click and pull and that'll go ahead and kind of match what's behind it. Of course, it is, again, camera-based, so you need to kind of finagle it a little bit, and it's kind of hard to control, so in that case, not great. Another thing you could do, if you're so inclined, is when you're done making... What is this? Okay, that's the right one. Um, so when you're done making this thing, you could just say, okay, give me a B, create, insert, mesh, new... And then when you go and drag this on here, that's when you would just do turn back on your projection strength. And then when you drag it out, it'll just snap to the underlying mesh. Now, it's, if you have an underlying mesh that's decent, uh, in this case, it is what it is. It's just kind of a DynaMesh thing. So again, what I would probably end up doing is just using one of the deformers. Um, if you need a little bit more control, instead of doing a bend arc, you do a bend curve. And you can say, okay, give me... Ooh, that did something weird, didn't it? Um, oh, unless I went I went back too many um, undos. Sorry about that. Um, you can use a bend curve to give you more uh, resolution. Oh, these aren't welded. 
That's interesting. When I bridged it, did it not weld? Let's see. Delete hidden. Uh, bridge two holes. U to U. Huh. And if you like your polygroups the way they are, just hold down Alt and then hold down Shift as you paint. So Alt to steal that polygroup and then Shift to switch to that polygroup. You can very quickly go through and just reassign polygroups based on what's existing rather than, you know, whatever. And then, uh, Oh yeah, we mirrored and weld in both directions. So it doesn't matter. Uh, in this case, there we go. Um, increase PG, D for dynamic. Good enough. Um, uh, did, did you have got anything or need to be retopologized before substance, or have you thought about that in advance? And every subtool already has subdivs. I, uh, if, if I'm just kind of concepting stuff out. Um, I'll play it fast and loose, but generally speaking, yeah, I do like to have subdivision history at least to be able to pose effectively. Um, if you're trying to pose like 12 million polygons, it's going to be tough. But uh, if every single one of these things has subdivision history, then when you dump it down in Transpose Master, it'll be all low res meshes. It'll be a lot easier to use. Um, but yeah, if I'm going to throw this in the Substance Painter, I'll do, uh, I mean, I have some stuff on that. If you go to, um, yeah, I guess my YouTube channel's probably a little bit. Um, easier here. So on here, you'll have sci-fi weapon process. This is quick and dirty. It's not like beautiful. Uh, there's a yeah, speed modeling and texturing that kind of goes through the ZBrush to painter stuff. And then if you want a little bit more involved, it's a mechanical skull series. I want to say uh, that's on here. The game rest stuff. Uh, it's a little more involved. Um, but you can, I think it's a series that you have to buy though, but it's on there, all of those steps. So if I find the mechanical school series, again, it's older, but um, if you're interested in that kind of stuff, I want to say a lot of it's free, like the high res mechanical stuff and then the painter baking and materials and the rendering um, is all on my YouTube channel. And then the high res organic and then the game res is in the series. So that's where it goes into like, you know, Reese uh, topology and quad draw and you know baking and marmoset and all that stuff. So the production stuff. Usually, usually for my live streams and stuff, I play it really fast and loose. Um, just because I don't have a lot, a lot of time. Cool. Um, <laughs> awesome. Glad the videos helped you while you're at university. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, so I, so I apologize if I miss something. There's a lot of I'm going. I'm posting links and that goes drops me to the bottom, and then uh, it, I have to scroll back up. So if I miss something, just shout it back out. Um, texture spotlight paint reference keep misaligned my reference. Have to work as a way to lock the reference to a certain view. Uh, that I would use Ref Switcher for. I think if I understand correctly, Ref Switcher it's a paid plugin, but it's super useful. It'll allow you to save a um, a model view and a, a completely different uh, concept view or a texture spotlight view, basically. Um, and then you can go through here and you can just say, you know, save view, load view. You can go through here and just grab from your presets. Uh, really, really um, flexible. Uh, cool. Uh, save low poly dynamesh, high poly texture created from high poly low. Um, Save the low poly dynamesh to get a high poly to paint on the texture, but then use the texture created on the low poly model. Yeah, you would, you're basically what you're talking about is I have a low poly model that has UVs and then I want to dynamesh it and add some, you know, detail and paint on it. Um, or you can subdivide and detail and paint on it. But if you want to bake the a dynamesh back to your original low poly, that's an arbitrary bake. You have an arbitrary low res that has nothing to do with the high res. There's no subdivision history. If you have subdivision history, you can very quickly... Uh, for example, this one here has UVs, right? So if we go through here and we say, okay, control D, control D, control D. Um, and then we'll go ahead and turn textures off. And then as we go through here, I can say, okay, uh, let me just grab yellow and then black and then um, smiley face. And then we'll go back here. So now I've, I've have subdivision history on a game on a mesh with uvs so if i want to say texture create new from poly paint it'll go ahead and give me 
my poly paint transferred to a UV map. Um, however, that I was only able to do that because I have subdivision history. So here's my low res with UVs, and then as I subdivide up, then I'm good to go. I can just transfer whatever I do to the high res to the low res. If you don't have that, if like here's my um, low res with UVs, and then I say, okay, dynamesh this, it's going to, I don't have any association. I don't have subdivision history. It's not, there's no UVs to go back to. In this case, you're still fully able to do whatever you want. You can go through here and again, um, shift the smooth and we can smooth this out and then go back in here and paint, you know, our, let's say, fill and then uh, Alt S, lazy mouse off, poly paint. Um, what am I missing here? RGB, <laughs> standard brush, unmask. Uh, 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 spotlight isn't on, so that shouldn't be blocking me. Texture map isn't on. Oh, somehow having a texture loaded, it shouldn't have that, but apparently when I dynamesh with the texture loaded, it got in a weird state. Um, so we'll turn that texture off. And then now we can paint with our dynamesh, but now I can't say create new from poly paint because there's no UVs on the original. In this case, you would have to export your low res, uh, shoulder underscore low, export this, shoulder underscore high, and then bake it externally from ZBrush. Or you could, <laughs> you could remesh this, project the, I mean, gosh, um, let's see. I mean, I could just do it real quick. It's kind of a weird thing, but it's like, okay, here's my low res mesh here and then here's my high res mesh and that's for the low res mesh let's go ahead and just say that's this is nothing texture off so here's my low res mesh with uvs and then here's my high res mesh if you want to do it in zbrush which i suppose you can do um, what you'd have to do is say okay these uh you could just show these and then project all visible but i like to go in here with this one hold down control and tap and go back to our low res and say uh, project history that's under subtool project and then control D to subdivide um, oops sorry um, delete higher so here's our low res control D to subdivide project history 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 now we have this is our original high res we don't need anymore now we have our low res with UVs projected to our high res with our high res details so now we can go back in here and say okay yeah texture map new from um, poly paint and then you can bake your normals you can bake a displacement you can bake anything you can go in here to Z plugin uh, Z plugin what Z plugin um, multi map exporter and you can say you know pick whatever maps you want to export and bake them in here or you can go into you know max my Amato, blender marmoset export your high export your low you can bake it in painter um, those videos go over that but anyway I know it's it's a weird workflow thing, but hopefully that helps. Um, when the dynamic thing to do in the perspective, I know perspective turns on our perspective, but the button above that, there's a dynamic button uh, that doesn't do anything. Uh, you're talking about, um, wait, is it? Oh, dy this dynamic here, I believe that ensures that this is turned on. The universal. Oh wait, is it? Huh. I think it has. Oh, let's see. Uh, perspective button. I want to say, and I'm not sure. I want to say it has something to do with this. Press to activate universal perspective camera. Deep press to activate classic perspective camera. I thought it had something to do with this, but um, looks like I'm wrong. I'm not sure what. Oh, you know what? Um, if I go out of solo mode here. Dynamic on? No. Hmm. Uh, there was something I was thinking about where if you have this off, you can say um, align to object so that when you, you know, you're in perspective mode and you go to the side, it kind of stays in perspective mode as opposed to now in this case, you have to have um, this one off because um, if this one is on and you move it over here, see how it kind of, it, it starts to skew when you bring it, it, when you go out of center, it kind of starts to skew your model. It kind of rotates, it kind of 
bends the model backwards a little bit. Um, but no, it's not that. I don't know. That's a good question. I'll have to look that up. Or if anybody knows, shout it out. Um, thank you for all the kind words, everybody. Um, oh, you know, I do have a... I, you know, I was playing around. I didn't do... Let's see, 40K. ZBrush. I have a... Uh, Actually, let me just open these real quick. I did do some of that stuff under the hood or behind the scenes. Streaming. Again, I, I took this to a certain point and then I got busy and then I kind of dropped it as I need to just come back and revisit this. So here's this and then here's... Um, oh man, do I even have... Sorry, it's been a while since I've been in this thing. Um, maybe this one? I'm trying to remember what state this was in. Yeah, here's here's kind of a thing. Um, I need to go through and it's skin. It's just kind of a quick block out thing. So and then here's a quick block out for my chain sword, and then here's a quick block out for my bolter. Again, it's all super vanilla, nothing really pushed or anything like that. Um, but yeah, we've got a little is it a menagerie of things here? Kind of play around with. Um, is it possible to fix UVs in ZBrush when they're stretched? Yeah, if you do have UVs on something, for example, um, this thing here. Uh, and in fact, if I wanted to be like, hey, I want to redo these UVs completely. Um, that would be, and again, just to play it safe, what you can do is again, Z plugin, um, UV master. I'm going to say work on clone. That'll spit you out into your own thing here. I'm going to say texture off. Uh, so you can see I have poly groups on here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just do a quick uh, group by normals, max angle down. Nope, not that low, quite a bit. So that'll kind of give me uh, cut seams along those different uh, polygroups here. So we can say polygroups on, uh, unwrap, and then when we hit flatten, these will be my UVs. And you, while it's in a flattened state, you can go through here and do whatever you want to uh, to your UVs. So anything uh, that you can change with your geometry, you're basically just using geometry tools to mess with your UVs. So you can go through here and you can rotate these around. Um, you can straighten things out by clipping or Z-scaling. Uh, whatever you want to do. So you have, I mean, it's not, it's not like crazy UV control. You know, there's a lot of UV tools that you may want to, I don't know, play around with. So you can go Z it over, export it, and then even import it back in and use other UV tools. But um, yeah, so for example, if we wanted to, um, I don't know, like straighten this edge here, you would literally just, while you're in UV mode, just kind of straighten it out. Um, Again, there's no like automatically unitize or anything like that in ZBrush, but um, and it's really not meant for that. Like UV Master is more of a hey, I just need some quick UVs, and it's really good for it. organic stuff, hard surface stuff. Eh, you know, it is what it is. But um, you can just go through here and mask. Sorry, these are kind of close together. So once once these are straightened here. You know, like, okay, now, again, just with this one here, you can say mask by uh, border. Control tap to invert that or mask your border and then go in here and say, you know, polish. Just crank that up and that'll kind of average those uh, UVs here. And again, we can say, let's go ahead and straighten this back out. There we go. So we've we've done all of that, right? So we say, okay, UV master uh, un flatten and then copy our UVs. We'll go back to our actual file here. We're going to paste our UVs. That's going to mess up our texture, um, but it's not a huge deal because um, all we got to do is do again new from polypaint and then there's our new UVs um, with our polypaint reapplied. Now we I deleted lower. I shouldn't have done that, but just so we could kind of mess around with the lower res, but um, now you have new UVs straightened and flattened and stuff like that. Cool. Um, every time I tap the curve to exchange my insert mesh, the curve always gets smoothed out a bit. Yeah, that's a um, hmm, that's a good one. 
Uh, I want to say they kind of semi-fixed that. So brush, oops, turn that off. Brush, we have our um, chain mesh here. And then um, underneath stroke, I believe it was stroke. There's, uh, or is it under curve smoothness? Turn that off maybe so that when we go in here and we say, you know what, uh, we want to change this curve out. And that's another cool thing about curves. You can just hop in here and say, hey, give me a new curve. I want um, a bracelet. So you can just tap here and just update that bracelet. Let's make it a little bit smaller. And then um, I want to say this curve smoothness down to zero maybe should help that, but I don't know that it, or, or we can even go in here to be extrude profile. We can just swap out a hair strand or something like that. Hmm. I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly how to stop that 100%. Um, insignia on the chest. Uh, yep. Yeah, that's back in... Uh, it's not on our station because I forgot about it. Thank you. Um, it's underneath, again, that big blue genie. And then just scroll down until you see... Uh, where is it? There it is. The Warhammer 40k Ultramarine uh, Part 1 and Part 2 right in here. So this link here. And then scroll back up. And again, if I miss something, apologize. Um, favorite food? I guess my knee-jerk reaction is pizza, but um, just like any American, I suppose. But uh, <laughs> pizza, hamburgers, hot dogs. Um... Uh, it kind of depends what I'm in the mood for. Thai food or Mexican food or Italian food. <laughs> it's hard to say a favorite. Uh, within a genre, I might be able to get my favorite. But um, Cool. Uh, yeah, I, I, I should. I did rig this model. Uh, I don't know if you guys are on Twitter all that much. But um, I did a quick... Um, kind of silly rig there we go i did <laughs> rig him and animate him just quickly uh extract normat from colored area so you don't want to sculpt pipes but for the baking you want to have some bumps in there um yeah it kind of i mean kind of depends um oh thank you for the uh Thank you for the uh, shout out in the cash. Uh, hey, my guy just began 3D design with all the new developments in image generation. Yeah, I'm afraid the next 10 years, 2D, 3D art should be disrupted. What are your thoughts? Um, that's a, uh, that's an interesting one. And I think, <laughs> I think what we need to be scared of more than anything is where our, not where our quality bar is, but where the audience's quality bar is. Does that make sense? Basically, um, certainly there's going to be AI that can generate movie scripts, for example. You know, there's, you know, Joseph Campbell, there's only a limited amount of stories to tell. And then you just kind of take, and also movies are pretty um, linear, you know, and you can get crazy. You can be David Lynch uh, if you want to with your movies or Quentin Tarantino. But generally speaking, for your billion dollar movies, you're going to have, it's three act play, and then you have a rising conflict and then resolution and then, You'll have certain characters and archetypes. All those characters are archetypes, and there's not that many archetypes. And then you swap the names out, you swap the dates out, and next thing you know, given those rule sets that we use to create something, and I'm just using movie scripts as an example, but anything, um, any robot can step through those steps and put in mass amounts of data and then figure out like, hey, you know, and it's not gonna know, I mean, until it's Skynet, it's not gonna know what it's doing uh, really. I suppose. I don't, I'm not an AI programmer, obviously, so <laughs> everything I'm saying is probably wrong. But uh, if you have a set of rules that you need something to follow and a lot of data that it can, you know, extrapolate data from and look for patterns and look for like what people like and what people don't like, and it can take what people like and funnel that into these rule sets and then spit out something. Uh, the first, just like an art, just like a real artist, the first time you go through a process, it's probably not going to be very good. But then you course correct and you learn. Uh, you machine learn, and then next thing you know, it's putting out slightly better scripts, and then better and better and better, until finally, um, it could be indistinguishable from somebody typing out a script 
you know, for days and days and days or, or just generating a script in 15 seconds. Um, and I guess the scary part about that for me, more so than, hey, this, we now have an AI bot generating these amazing, and, and also it's completely um, changeable. Instead of somebody having to go and argue with a writer who has sensibilities and has to sleep and eat, now they're going to, an executive can go in and just pull a slider and then be like, I want it, you know, uh, I want it to be written like it was written by this guy. I want it to be moody. I want it to have uh, an ensemble piece with uh, eight characters or maybe four, I don't know, maybe six, who knows. Uh, just pull those sliders around and then wait 15 seconds and then go read the script. Um, or eventually watch the movie, you know, maybe not in my lifetime, but um, <laughs> depending on how black mirror you want to get. Uh, but anyway, so back to the script part, you're going to have, you know, an AI bot that can write a script that's just as good as, you know, maybe, maybe not the best script in the world, or maybe not with all the nuance of like a really well done script. But again, the fear is you don't really need a well done script. How many movies out there are like brilliant movies, like five or, you know, five a year, maybe I'll give you that. Um, the rest of them are pretty good. And then there's some good ones and then there's some bad ones and then there's some really bad ones. Um, I have a feeling that it's going to, it's going to, you know, when you talk about algorithms, it's going to create something that's going to generate the most amount of money. And the most amount of money is the broadest audience and the broadest audience is kind of lowest common denominator. So when people are worried about like, oh my God, AI is going to make the most wonderful, beautiful, artistic piece. Yes, it probably will be able to do that, but it won't have to. It'll just have to make something good enough for the most people to like it. And rarely is that the best piece. Usually it's like, and especially, you know, think about like what TV people watch. You need to write scripts for reality television or generate reality TV. That's all you really, that's the bar. The bar isn't, same thing with uh, AI driving. Uh, the bar isn't you're the best driver in the history of the universe. The bar is you're better than the average driver, which is actually pretty bad. Um, same thing with art. You're not trying to make the best art in the world. You're just trying to make art that's better than the average, which is middling, right? It's not great. It's just pretty good. Um, so that's the, that's the bar. And if they don't, and here's the thing, it'll be able to exceed that bar in crazy ways. And once you get into that conversation, it gets into, it'll be able to generate and produce things and find patterns and stuff that we haven't come up with yet. And it'll just be able to crank at that problem all day long, 24 seven on supercomputers and figure out all sorts of cool stuff. So very, it's awesome, but also a little scary in that it kind of gets a little sky netty. And then it's like, well, with great power comes great responsibility. And do we find ourselves all that responsible? And at that point, I think we're just going to have to pray that AI is more responsible than we are it's going to have to be smarter than we are and more responsible than we are. Cause at the end of the day, we're just kind of, we're just kind of apes <laughs> advanced, um, apes with opinions, I suppose. Um, so hopefully AI is better and smarter than we are because it's going to be scary if it's not, um, strap a normal map shifted. Sorry. That's a long answer, but, um, hopefully that makes sense. I mean, even if it doesn't make sense, I don't know what else to tell you. Uh, but kind of cool though, right? Um, shift has to do that. I never managed to use copy poly group, unfortunately. Is there a merge verts or edges in Z modeler? Yes. Um, if shift attached to smooth brush, I never managed to use copy poly group. Um, merge or weld edges in Z modeler. Yes, there is. And so back to this, what we were kind of playing around with and, it, and then all the mid verts didn't weld. So if I go back in here, and we say, you know what, let's do this. Let's say we grab this here and we just put in a tiny little bevel um, right down the middle here. And then we can say, um, here's a, so if you have a lasso selected, it'll actually select edge rings for you. So you can just go through here and say geometry modify, modify topology, delete hidden. Um, let's go ahead and grab this here. Go to unmesh mesh center, X turned off. So we can go right down the middle, oops. Sorry, uh, I forgot I had Elsim turned off. Uh, get rid of that delete hidden frame W. Um, and I guess I don't need this. So unmesh mesh center, there we go. 
And now, sorry, sorry, sorry. U, Q, here, thank you. So we squeeze these together and then it was like, okay, everything looks great. And then you hit um, D for dynamic and you're like, oh, it's split open. Or you go in here and you shift smooth and you realize, um, actually it's down the middle, so it might actually stay. Actually, here's a fun fact. Uh, if we have smooth brush here, so we're gonna go in here to brushes and we're gonna go down here to um, Smooth brush modifiers as a min connected, set that to one, and that'll allow you to actually smooth open borders. In this case, since it's across an x-axis, it's not really gonna let me, but that's there. However, to weld, you can go into geometry modify topology, uh, and that's I just have that in my custom menu here, but underneath modify topology here, you're gonna have um, weld points and a little open and close circle. So weld points uh, with, and a weld distance over here, so weld points with open circle will, uh, if you just hit weld points and with a distance of one, you have to crank this up quite a bit. Eh, maybe three is not too bad. Um, occasionally you may need to change it to close circle to grab even further, um, but it looks like open circle does a good job. So we'll say weld points. Now, uh, if you did want to do it in Z modeler, um, for example, um, just, just real quick, X symmetry here, insert same modulate here. And then, um, say delete here. So for example, uh, we wanna stitch these things up, right? Well, you're gonna use a stitch function. So you just hover over a point and you say stitch two points and you can say U to, it's like a target weld, U to U, and then U to U, and then U to U, and then it'll stitch or U to U, it'll stitch the other way. Um, so you can go through manually and stitch things up. Um, no, there's no line back here, so we'd have to stitch that up. Uh, also collapse is a good one. So collapse, e collapse edge. Uh, we can collapse this up and then collapse this over. Um, so it's not a, a stitch. You can't stitch those parts, but once you have them welded, then you can go through here and you can kind of collapse things over or back and stuff like that. Um, is Marmoset set versus Painter? Which one do you use? find better for baking? Uh, for quick stuff, I just send it over to uh, Substance Painter, make sure my stuff's labeled high to low, make sure you go into... God, do I have a thing I can open? Make sure... Is there anything fun? Maybe there'll be a fun thing we can show in there. Um, everything's set up high to low, and then in your FBX, so you'd go through and you'd say export FBX high, under, and everything's labeled nicely, blank, 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 underscore high, and then you can just bake by namespace, which uh, file recent, bear tiling, QD, Mixelplex, Jordans, I haven't really done. I mean, I do have We have a version of this painted up here. So uh, for example, let's go in here real quickly and we'll just say, uh, hmm, what am I looking for here? Uh, it's under here, yes, shadows, that's fine. Okay, so we have this in here and then if I wanna go into bake, we go into texture settings and then we literally say bake mesh maps and then you bring in your high res um, and we're on eyes, uh, but if we wanted to bake, I guess the chest is more interesting. So here's the chest mat, for example. And then we go in here and we say, okay, I wanna bake this off. Texture settings, we're gonna go in here to bake mesh maps. Um, under my normal map, for sure, my tangent normal, I'm gonna go in here and say match by mesh name because I wanna bake only my high to only my low. That's gonna make it so that I don't have to explode my mesh. Um, it's literally just gonna go through and say, okay, Whatever I had underscore high is gonna to bake to underscore low and that's it. You're not gonna get any normal errors from objects that are close to it. It separates those out itself by name, bakes, and then you're good to go. And the occlusion might be a little bit different. Um, so right here, it's set to always. You can also bake your ambient occlusion out the same mesh name. If you're gonna animate something and you don't want, and it's gonna like move the shoulder pad away and next thing you know, you're gonna have a big ambient occlusion baked into your arm, then maybe you wanna set this to only same mesh name. So, and you can also do it it's texture set by texture set. You can change those settings. Um, so I don't even know if I still have this stuff set up, but, uh, you would go through and bake and then it would go through and bake your maps. And then now if we go in here to, um, 2d only, there we go. So then it would basically be something like this and we can drop it down to normal. It would bake out your, uh, maybe not. That's just, there we go. Mesh maps, normal. There we go. So it'll bake out your normal maps. Now, obviously this is just trash 
auto UV stuff, right? Um, because again, I don't have a ton of time, but if I was to do this real, um, for reals, uh, that would be something I would go through and hand retopologize and then nicely U uh, UV with like rhizome or Max Miyamoto Blender, Cinema 4D or UV Headus layout. And uh, let's go in here to, let's see, we want to change our map out to maybe something a little more bus garage. He's industrial, right? We'll put him right in the little bus garage here. Or we put send him on vacation. Ah, oh, look at that. Just chilling at the beach. Cool sea breeze. Little steel drum. There we go. Now if you want to crank up the emissive, um, that might be a shader thing. So underneath here, I do I do have a little bit of emissive in the eyeball. So in this case, um, ASM metal rough. Huh. Oh, we're not on the helmet, so I can't go and do the emissive thing. But we can do that if we swap back to the... Uh, it wouldn't be helmet, it would be eyes. It's on its own thing. Um, this is where we can go in and we can say, okay, crank up the... I just saw it, did I not? Emissive intensity. So you can say, okay, emissive intensity, crank up. And then another cool thing is underneath here, uh, display settings. Um, is it display setting? Yeah. yeah, activate post effects here. And then underneath glare, you can really crank up, you know, how emissive uh, stuff is. So if you crank this up and then go back to our emissive intensity, maybe crank that up a lot, maybe. There we go. Now your eyes start going nuts. So you can really kind of play around that. And it doesn't have to be bloom. It can be lens flare, or cheap lens or whatever you want. Um, but it, now that's quick and dirty. If you want to do something, this isn't completely textured, obviously, but um, if you want really nice control over your high and low, and then um, I think I have, do I not have that on my YouTube channel? Maybe I don't. Now that I think about it, it's in the mechanical um, skull series where we go through Marmoset and then we bake high to low. And then there's actually cages you can paint uh, skew map pay, uh, skew maps and um, cage painting. So you can actually grab more or less of your normal. Uh, you can paint your cage on the fly and then you can also paint skew maps. So like if you have a, a bolt that's kind of looks weird, you can go and paint a skew map so it'll bake straight down or take into the account the uh, normal for text normals. So... Marmoset for more. Marmoset's got a great baker, period. Um, when I'm just moving fast, I'll just throw it in the painter. But they're both used for different things. But I uh, use a noise. How would I then apply that so I can use it for baking in substance? So if you're in ZBrush, yoink. Um, yeah, and so we had, we were playing around with a chain that had noise on it, right? So a noise in ZBrush is just displacement. It's just a displacement map. So that allows you, it kind of frees you up so you don't have to, uh, again, this is a very low res mesh. So if I turn off, uh, if I do shift D, it's just dynamic subdivisions, it's not real geometry. And it's also not real noise. It's just, you know, a texture map being applied. If I want to make this real, I can go to surface noise, apply to mesh, but it's not going to do much because again, if I turn off noise and hit shift D, which is turning off dynamic subdivision to regular, that's my real geometry. So if I want to transfer a lot of high res detail to this geometry, first, what I should have done is made the, you know, put an extra edge loop through here um, so that it's a little bit more even geometry. Because when I apply the detail like to geometry, it's going to want more resolution in here to match the rest of the resolution. So that's my bad. However, you can say control D. Now let's go up to you know 1.6 million polygons. And then now when I go back down here to surface noise, it looks the same as it did when it was just dynamic. So that's a good way to kind of cheat the system and get the high res result without paying the cost. But we've paid the cost already. Now when you go to surface noise, apply to mesh, um, that will actually take that geometry and make it real. So now go through here and smooth, that's actual geometry displaced. However, um, you know, mix that with layers, mix that with morph targets if you want more control. So like before I apply that noise, and in fact, um, 
if I go noise apply to mesh, I actually like to do a mask by noise instead. That'll convert my noise to a mask. And then I can say, make a new layer. And while I'm recording, I can say, hey, let's, let's inflate uh, through that mask a little bit with my inflate and say, okay, I'm done recording. And now I can go through here and I can use my layers to kind of dial in exactly how much I want. And then I can say bake all. And then if I had stored a morph target, which I didn't, um, I had some morph target on there, but it wasn't relevant. Um, then I could go back in and like paint out any areas I don't want to be morphed. Uh, Ref switcher is exactly what I needed. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Well, thank uh, the person who made Ref switcher. They are awesome. Any chance you can showcase the Ref viewer you use next Tuesday? Um, yeah. Or I mean, I can just uh, let's see. Quadro. Um, YouTube. So here's YouTube and here's, I want to say Gumroad has the latest actually. It's not, it's, so this is, uh, this is Louise Cruel. He was the best man at my wedding, but, uh, here it is. You can just grab it. Uh, there is a, there's, again, it's not, I don't know how much he's really supporting this anymore. It's been a while since there's been an update. Uh, 0.95. I think there actually might be a later one than this. Anyway, um, there's a few, a little bit of nuance to this. Basically, it's just a program that kind of runs. So if I go to more open file location, I just kind of have it sitting in here as a, here's the exe and then I have a shortcut to my thing, but it's just an exe file. Um, you're gonna wanna run as administrator, say yes, and then it's gonna pop up a little thing. Uh, you're not going to be able to see it. I can't record this, unfortunately. But in Windows, it's going to be in the bottom right. And you can just drag it out. It's actually in the YouTube videos um, that I made. I think I made those. Again, it's been a long time. YouTube. Um, oh, this isn't mine. But um, check that out. There's Quadro Image Viewer. And then um, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do. And then... Underneath here, I want to say, okay, here's the YouTube videos that I made. Um, I've made a couple YouTube videos for it, but anyway, you can check that out. I'll just paste that right down here. Doop, 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 beep, bop, boop. Uh, and again, I apologize if I missed something. I'm just kind of scooting back and forth. Um, fix UVs and ZBrush when they're stretched. Yeah, yeah it's allowed to be manually going in uh, and just playing around with the geometry like we showed. Um, a mesh yes and then uh 30 million polygons look i'm wanting is a winning uh yes yeah, so 30 million polygons to get the look i'm wanting is there a better way uh you can go from 1.65 million and then decimate it down so once you have this and you're like okay i don't need that much i just want to 3d print this thing right um that's where decimation master comes in real handy z plugin uh decimation master pre-process current and that'll go through and um process this and then you can dump you can dump this down to like 20k now it's going to be trash geometry but at that point who cares and you can also go through here and use sculptors pro to add geometry where you need it and continue to sculpt and just like spot sculpt uh certain areas um and it's not probably not the answer you're looking for here's the other thing too is you don't have well if you want to apply surface noise to a model so you can 3d print it yeah you're gonna have to apply that to geometry and there's going to be a lot of geometry and then you'll have to go through and be like well i only want geometry where it matters and that's when there's edge differences and then you can go back through here and say okay let's just make this down to like 25k decimate current Ooh, okay maybe not 100k there we go so 100k down from 1.65 million to still maintain your detail um However, if you're going to like just want to render this and you want to render this surface noise out, then instead of using surface noise, I would just UV it. And then in your rendering program, like um, Arnold, V-Ray, Redshift, Marmoset, whatever, um, you would just bring in that texture or a tiling weave texture. So um, actually, let's undo back. Sorry, I'm going to spill coffee on myself. Um, here's this. And then instead of like surface noise, we're going here to edit. We'll turn off. Um, the noise plug. We'll go down here to this alpha option, and I'm just going to go really quickly and just grab something that tiles. Um, let me see. It would be under uh, alphas, maybe in here. Is there a tiling? Yeah, this one tiles, right? So here's an alpha that tiles, and then you can go through here and then 
So instead of doing this in ZBrush, just do this in any other program. Uh, just bring in uh, a tiling map into the shader, um, tile it as many times as you want, and then when you're in the rendering program, it'll just tile that through there, and then you hit render, and then it'll just render nicely. Uh, and you don't, and and you can bring it as a displacement map. You can bring it as a normal map. Um, in this case, since it's a height map, it'll be displacement or a bump. Um, but yeah, so that'll allow you, and that way you don't have to, you know, 30 million polygons to get the look just to render it. Don't do that. Just UV it and then tile your geometry. But let's change that strength to the other direction so it's a little more weavy. There we go. Um, Jacket for 3D characters, a lot of objects. I want to paint this in substance, so I try to merge this object or export one by one. Uh, I like to keep things simple. So, I mean, you can bring it in as in substance as UDIMs and paint across UDIMs and have it all do, 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 do. Um, as all the separate texture sets. Um, but for me personally, if I'm just doing game res stuff, it's like I'm just going to bake that jacket zero to one and then just paint on it if I can, if the resolution hold up. Uh, cage for baking in ZBrush, making the geometry slightly bigger in the same position. Uh, you can try and you can try inflate. Uh, so displacement map. There's inflate. Uh, not displacement map, uh, deformation. There's inflate and bal inflate balloon. Um, that's basically going to push the normals along their normal axis. However, um, yeah, that would like that's just a for me. I would be like just use the generated cage from Marmoset and then just paint. You know, you basically pick your min max for your cage overall, and then you can high you can um, paint to fine tune your cage in Marmoset. So it's, that's easier, but. Um, there might be, having said that, there might be a, uh, let's see, make polymesh 3D. So you want to make a cage for this, because what's going to happen on a on an object like this is, uh, we duplicate this off, and we go out of solo mode, turn on transparency. Uh, we go through here and we do an inflate. Uh, it's going to start doing this. Whoa. Uh, not great. So in this instance, yeah, even QMesh polygroup all is not is going to do kind of the same thing. It's going to kind of Actually, that does a little bit better. Um, and then inflate balloon. Let me see. I don't know. You might have to just play with these. So inflate and yeah, inflate balloons even worse. So inflate maybe not what you're looking for. Um, Q mesh polygroup all. And then when you're doing this, hold down shift, and that'll just kind of pull along the surface normal. And it's doing this exact same thing. Um, you could do a group by normals. I mean, this is getting into the weeds, but you know, group Q mesh polygroup all. Eh. And then you can just, again, hold down shift and that'll pull along that surface normal. And then you can pull along this surface normal. But then you're doing a lot of manual work. And it's not real scientific, so eh, I don't know. That's a good question. I don't do that in ZBrush, so I don't have a... I can't give you a bunch of <laughs> examples on that one, unfortunately. Um, cool. Uh, organize a project like this. Lots of individual high poly pieces. Pose it. How would you prepare for baking? Export the whole thing decimated as one single mesh combine. Uh, I think what I ended up doing, again, it's been a second, but um, I have, let's pull this down. These are all the chunks that I exported out as. Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean like I combined everything into pelvis or legs up or essentially what I did. Let me just open the bake file. That'll work, right? Um, we'll drain. Let's look at this one. Ah. Session's getting a little bit heavy here. Uh, transparent off full. For example, um, so yeah, uh, basically here's helmet, 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 eyes. Backpack, 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 backpack. So when I'm baking all these things together, um, here's backpack high, upper. So I'm baking this all as one chunk and then backpack high, lower, baking all this as one chunk. Um, arm, all as one chunk. And then my, uh, my low res is gonna be basically, for example, the backpack's a good example. So I'll just open that up. So all on, all off you, backpack, backpack. So. These are my different backpack underscore highs. I would make corresponding underscore lows for these chunks. Uh, and there's only 
one, two, three, four pieces that make up the backpack. And then I would just have a corresponding low res. Again, the Sci-Fi Pistol series goes into this where you just, you can Dynamesh to voxelize, or if you want to use Houdini, um, I got a little bit of that too. You can go through Houdini Auto Game Res. This one, this really dull looking thumbnail, uh, the Houdini Auto Game Res. And there's also an older one, the Houdini Game Dev Tool Set. But this Houdini Auto Game Res will take you through kind of the same process as I do in ZBrush, which is voxelize, quote unquote, with a Dynamesh. Or you could use a Boolean, I suppose, depending on how exact you need to get. Um, and then decimate that down, auto UV it. Uh, every, you know, the backpack's going to have, it's only, it's going to be laid out zero to one. So the backpack's going to be on one texture set. So multiple highs baked to multiple lows, but all of those are assigned one material so that they all get one texture set in here. So if I want to just look at the backpack here, and this is kind of irritating me. So we'll go ahead and turn off our um, post effects. So uh, for example, so here's the backpack, uh, and again, when we go to bake this, it's going to be FBX high to FBX low, but that FBX is going to have four pieces in it, um, four underscore high, four underscore lower for the low res, throw it in here, bake it so that it bakes to the same namespace, and um, they're all one material, so it gets one texture set, um, or they could be in just one zero to one space if you're using UDIMs, or if you want multiple UDIMs on texture sets, you can do that in Substance Painter, but this is simple, so all one, all one thing. And there you go. There's the backpack high, bake to backpack low. And again, it's total trash. Like, don't get, don't think that this is like a production model. This is literally just auto UV'd and uh, baked out. So I wouldn't put this in my portfolio. It's like, hey, check out my wires. It would basically be like, hey, don't look too close, but you can see an ultramarine running around and uh, good enough, right? Um, and again, it's just because I'm live streaming and uh, have a couple hours at the beginning of the day and then maybe 40 minutes to, to put together the sizzle reel and do the marketing stuff and put it and then don't do it again for a month. But um. <laughs> Yeah, generated books too, man. I mean, probably, I'm going to guess, and well within our lifetimes, uh, unless you get hit by a bus today, um, there's absolutely going to be AI generated stuff that's going to be like, whoa, that's crazy that that's AI because I kind of enjoyed it. Um, ah, try Mexican food. That's that's usually my go-to. Um, although I, I say that I'm in Texas, so a lot of it ends up being Tex-Mex, which is, yeah, I won't get to a religious argument there about food, but you know what the difference is. Uh, more dairy. Uh, let's see, create AI bots, watch AI made movies. Uh, <laughs> yes. That's a good point. You could use AI to do your, yeah, make an AI bot to go on Discord and make you, uh, you know, the social butterfly that I always wanted to be and then actually use that time to, I'll have a pavmic.exe that'll go and talk to people on Discord for me. Because I don't go on Discord enough, but man, if I had an AI bot to do it for me, I could go on there every day. Um, <laughs> uh, open and closed circle means, uh, in, in regards to what, there's a lot of open and closed circles in ZBrush, um, that do different things. But, oh, one interesting thing for open and closed circle that I do want to bring up just because it's super useful. Um, if you ever get caught in a pinch, which I generally do, and I, I apologize, John, yeah, I know we were going to talk about like, um, <laughs> sci-fi panels and I went on several thousand tangents. But, you know, when I don't come in with an agenda, that's what I usually end up doing. I'm just, in this week, I've just been tired. So um, hopefully it's been useful. It hasn't been a real nice through line to making something. But um, anyway, for example, we're over here and we're doing crazy stuff with our belt. And we're working at kind of a small scale, right? There we go. So uh, we got this belt. And you know what? Let's just go for broke. Uh, you know, I'll just do a quick save on this one. Uh, or, or if you just want to kind of save this out and kind of revisit it by itself later, you can punt it out into here. You can just say clone, and then that'll just be its own Z tool. And we can save this as buckle dot Z tool, call it a day. So while we're in here and I want to say, okay, you know what? Let's do dynamic apply. So it's all real geometry with subdivisions. And I'm just going to immediately throw this into um, Dynamesh here. Um, and it's like, oh, it's too low res. So I want to Dynamesh even higher, you know? Up here, 4096, Dynamesh, no. Okay, there we go. And it's still, oops, that's why. Delete hidden, F. 
Okay, so even at 4096, it's still not quite there. Um, here's a fun fact, if you didn't know what, in fact, let's do this, we'll hold on shift with Sculptors Pro turned on and make this really big. So we have two drastically different resolutions on here. So if I go in here, let's hit Control W and let's switch this out so you can see it better. So we have one resolution, two resolution, three resolution, four resolutions on here, right? And so when I wanna go in here to Dynamesh, you can drag out from the resolution slider on here and it'll pick the resolution it is. So here's very high, here's even higher, and you can see it's kind of maxed out right here. Um, and then this is a little bit lower, so if you wanna match this resolution, just pick it and then control drag and it'll match that resolution. Now back to the whole can't Dynamesh high enough. And let's say this was actually okay for the belt, but then I wanna put, um, let's see, uh, 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 get rid of this, X symmetry turned on. Um, and in fact, let's just do X symmetry across the X and L sims turned on, we don't really need that on. And then um, BI brush insert, uh, yeah, body parts, sure, why not? And then we'll just grab a head here and then we'll go ahead and split this off and we'll say rotate this back. So we're gonna have just a creepy uh, head on here for the emperor's belt or whatever, right? Um, now, this inherited the Dynamesh that this had, the Dynamesh properties, and we max this out at 4096. Now, if I Dynamesh this head at 4096, it's like, ugh, it's just way too low, right? That's where this open circle comes in. Now, be careful, change it to open circle, and then immediately drop this down, because this is like, this acts as a multiplier, so you can control drag, and now, you know, originally with closed circle and resolution 688, this thing Dynameshes down to 157 points. With open circle, resolution 688, Dynamesh, it Dynameshes to half a million, 600,000. So drastically different results. So if you're ever working small and you can't just quite pull out the resolution you need, change that to open circle. Be careful though, because if you keep this maxed out at 4096 with open circle and then Dynamesh again, it's gonna be like a 12 million polygon mesh. Drop this down and then dial in exactly what you need uh, for your resolution for when you're working at small, small scales in ZBrush. Um, mm. um, okay. ZBrush plugin, ref viewer, switcher. Uh, just in case, let me go back up here. Sorry, I've got three streams of um, questions coming in here <laughs> from three different sources. So, um, oh, uh, so the Z plugin, reference viewer, switcher. Sorry, the poorly word question. Um, Shout that question out again because I want to make sure I answer it correctly. Is it better to bake normal mass ZBrush or Substance Painter? Uh, you can do some pretty impressive, like if I'm baking, uh, what's an example that I've done recently? Oh, the Mixelplex. Um, that's on my art station page. I don't know why. It's kind of embarrassing, but um, I don't know. I thought it was fun. So if I'm baking like a 50 million polygon mesh to ZBrush, and uh, I guess we can open that up actually. Um, That'll be a fun one, maybe. So speaking of baking, so if I'm baking a 50 million polygon mesh in ZBrush that has a displacement applied, and I'm baking my high to my low in ZBrush, let's make this a little smaller here, so you can actually see it. Um, Samba, let's just do Mixoplex. Um, so for something truly terrifying, if we go back here. Um, so for example, I, I would just bake that in ZBrush. ZBrush has a really excellent like displacement and normal map baker. Uh, you can bake the 16-bit or 32-bit on your displacement. Your normal maps will bake just fine and it'll give you, you know, 50 million polygons of detail. Um, no problemo. Uh, so I wouldn't necessarily export a high res and then export a low res and then bake that in some sense paper or marble set. It's just bake it in Z, uh, ZBrush. It's totally fine. Uh, there's my original mesh. So you worked in DC Universe Online 1.5 million years ago, um, I started on that. Uh, but anyway, I updated that model here. You can kind of see the process sped up. And then we just threw it into Maya and did a auto rig and then a little bit of weights and stuff. It's kind of for my CGMA class. Um, I actually did a, anyway. So uh, there's that. And then in here, if we have full quality turned on and then the render, I believe, has your ray tracing turned on. Yeah, so basically, um, let's go back to my sky 
here. We'll turn this one off and this one on. I guess they're both just different variations of that. But anyway, this has the um, the very, very high resolution stuff baked in. You can't really tell that much, but he's, he's, he, has, he has his subsurface scattering is kind of high. Uh, let's see, scatter depth down just a bit. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Let's see, take his head out of the equation. Yeah. I like that view. But anyway, yeah, so that's basically what I did there was bake in ZBrush, which essentially the only the process for that is, um, not interesting this is, but underneath normal map here, you just have, now the thing about ZBrush is you can't bake arbitrary low to arbitrary high. It has to be a low res subdivision history up to your high res. There's a connection or relationship between those two. Then you can go in here and bake your normal map either from here um, you know, with these settings or again, back into Z plugin. Uh, and in fact, I can even in here, I have a link to, here we go. Basically what I did, the multi-expression base mesh. You can just check that out on the scan store. There's tutorials there, uh, download here for free. And then I think there's tutorials in here as well. Maybe there you go, tutorials. So transferring your displacement map stuff with their base mesh and playing around with their <laughs> expressions and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. I'm in uh, Austin, Texas. Uh, very, very South Austin, technically, Hayes County. Um, cool. Uh, keep separate subtools, but have them share the same UV and substance. Um, that's just when... Now, if you're exporting your low res out of ZBrush, that's difficult to do. But when you're in Maya or Max Maya Moto Blender or whatever... Um, all the low res pieces you want to be in the same texture set, just assign one material to it. So in this case, it'd be like chest underscore mat, and then multiple low res get assigned that material. And then when you export your low res a substance, it's going to take all those chunks and put them into one texture set. So multiple high res, multiple low res, baked out to one texture set, just have the same material applied. <laughs> yeah, AI gen. Now that's the other thing too, is AI could be stuff like, hey, I'm constantly changing my sound settings in Microsoft. Uh, and if AI's, and this could be scary too, but if AI is watching you constantly do the same thing over and over again, it could be smart enough to go like, hey, I'm noticing you're doing this a lot. I'm going to make your life a little bit easier. And just number one, I can probably just change those sound settings for you because it seems to be something you like to do a lot. And it'll probably pop, pop a prompt that goes like, hey, I see you doing like a little clippy. We'll bring clippy back and only he'll be... Uh, a sentient uh, Skynet clippy and he'll be like hey I, you're doing this a lot do you want me to go ahead and just do this or even repetitive task while I'm in here doing the very first thing we'd loaded up was like all those alphas and I'm going through and doing one two three and I'm like boy this is sure boring if AI is watching me it could go like hey this looks like a boring task I know these steps I can just do it for you you want to go have a beer watch football and then uh, I'll do this for you and I'll just send you a text when I'm done and you could be like yeah go ahead and then it, it'll go through and do those steps for you. And it'll just be done because, again, those are just blah, 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 blah. And granted, you could go into, you know, C++ and write it and then, you know, go into Z scripting or do whatever and do that. Um, or you can have Skynet do it for you. There's probably a downside <laughs> to that, but I don't know, man. I guess we'll see. Um, it's not going anywhere. Um, cool. I uh, guess yeah, sci-fi. Yeah, I need to, I don't know. It's almost Halloween, right? Hey, you know what? Go tweet at me. I'm not, and it just, I don't know. Let me know what would be a, what's cool. What is everybody doing? Uh, something bite-sized I can do in like two hours. I'm already over time now. Something I can do in a couple hours on ZBrush and then dump it into whatever and maybe we can throw a rig on it and animate it or whatever but just something bite-sized that I can do in a couple hours or maybe two sessions so four hours um, that I could make that might be fun I have a hard time thinking of those things you think I wouldn't after having a month in between but boy I'm the worst so give me some ideas and um, um, oh scribe lines panel cuts etc exactly and honestly at the end of the day Again, get back to your question from the original, John Yu. I'm sorry. Um, you know what? I did have that Doom live stream that I don't know that it really answers that question necessarily that great. Um, this Doom showerhead overview, and we just talk about 
you know, cutting pieces and zero meshing and oh, chains and skulls and kind of blobbing out your concept idea quickly and then going through and then rebuilding and stuff. Um, for scribe lines specifically, um, let me see if I can just pop this thing out here and we'll say dynamic apply and control D, control D. The only bad thing about those is that you do need a lot of resolution. So if we go in here to brush, chisel, for example, drop that Z intensity down, pick this one, you know, going through and just cutting in lines. Um, number one, you gotta, and I, this is on the YouTube channel too, but okay. So we'll just say uh, Z brush and then our, where is it, tablet? pressure uh, size. I'm just going to crank this up so it acts more like a mouse. Um, so that way everything's consistent and then I can go through here and I can even hold down shift to kind of snap here. Um, and then you can cut in your scribe lines. Let's also take that stroke curve, um, lazy mouse, lazy radius way down. Um, so you have this, oops, cutting in lines. And then of course, if you go across, you're going to have to turn on morph target. So you can go across nicely. So again, morph target store. And then now when we go across, it'll cut across cleanly. Um, and it'll also pick up on your last brush stroke, or it should, that is contained underneath stroke. Yoink. Um, lazy snap is off by default, which seems kind of weird for this brush, but we'll go ahead and crank lazy snap up a little bit. So while we're drawing and we let go and then we want to cross back over, that's totally fine. And then I want to start again from here. If you just get it in the vicinity, it'll start exactly where you left off. Just get it close and it'll start, it'll pick up exactly where it left off. Um, only problem with that is you need a lot of, uh, a lot of resolution and it's kind of destructive in that you know, if you want to change it, you're just going to have to go back in here and be like, well, let me smooth that out or H polish this back up. And ugh. Um, you can use Booleans for that. Um, actually, a good talk. I'll resend this out because it, I think it's got some good stuff on there. Hold on. Um, I almost always bring this up. Oops. So this doc right here. And then. Um, they're all good talks under the artist examples. There's some good uh, links in here. The id software talk is a good one. And they talk about their kind of their process for Z modeling and dynamic and then sculpted details and non-destructive versus destructive and what that really means when you're talking about high res stuff. So check that out. There's some good links in there, but it's all, all that stuff's in there. There's uh, I wish I had a, there's just so many ways to go about it. And usually, what I need to do is I guess I guess sit down and then we'll just go through this and like, okay, pop this piece out, Z remesh it, panel loops, uh, start with a, uh, a primitive and then dynamesh it or boolean it down and then Z remesh that result. And then, you know, any, any panel lines I would, I would kind of pick and choose like, okay, this is a separate piece, but then maybe this line right here could just be a chisel brush or a Damien standard or a, um, orbs cracks, you know, all the different brushes people use to kind of cut in a line. Damien Standard, Damien Standard 02, make that a little bit bigger, that's a little bit more creaturey. This is awesome for creature stuff, but um, you know, all the different slash two sometimes, all the different panel brushes people use to kind of quickly uh, kind of go in and do panel lines. But that's again, more of a quick panel line as opposed to like a panel loop solution or rebuilding geometry or topology brush, that kind of stuff. Um, recasting come up with recasting bake instead of uh, within the mesh. A AI might help there too. Like, hey, bake my stuff. You know, I don't even have to name it at that point. It can look at something and go, oh yeah, this is in the same area. It's within a 99 percentile of the other pieces. So I, I, I know what high goes to what low. Don't worry about it. I got you. Um, you know, we'll get there too. Um, Tuesday stream, you could showcase a Z plugin uh, ref viewer you use. I think it's a few streams you mentioned as an art station. Yeah. Oh, act, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I got you. So in here, actually, the uh, I'll show you exactly where I used it because we ended up using it on, I think I used it a couple times, but the one I remember is under, did I use it? Oh, something I used, a, shoes I might have used it, but I don't want to send you on a wild goose chase. I know I used it on the uh, here. So reference viewer. All 
our ref switcher. Here, okay, good. Here's the link to the ref switcher plugin. Here's the reference switcher plugin, 2433, boom, yes. So I do talk about like bringing in multiple views and how to use it and stuff like that here. So, so we'll do, um, sorry, share, start at, copy, done. Check that section out there. Also the ref viewer, um, person who made that their YouTube channel, uh, when you go and get it, they'll have it links to their YouTube channel of them using it too. Mm. Hey, I read topology, now we're talking. I'm uh, from Round Rock. You're a couple miles north of me. Well, many miles north of me now, but I actually lived in Round Rock for a long time. Went to high school in Georgetown, Texas. Class of 99. Uh, <laughs> high sculptor, yeah. Um, lost subdivs. Now I'm stuck with the high poly character, which I pose somehow in the tools like Zero Metro Project makes some mesh distortions. Oh, yeah. You might be... I mean, that would be my solution, unfortunately, is like, well, you have a high poly. Well, sometimes if you have a high poly where you lost your subdivisions, that's not necessarily a deal breaker, depending on where you are in the process. So for instance, um, we say dynamic apply, and now we have, oops, I mean, this is a, this is a Hail Mary, but you have subdivision history on here and you say delete lower and now I don't have subdivision history. You should be able to reconstruct, boop, 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 just reconstruct back and it'll calculate like, well, this face goes, and these four faces go to one and these four, you know, these four faces go to one, these four faces go to one. It'll backtrack back through your subdivision history and then you can just kind of rebuild it. Of course, if you dynameshed it, then uh, it's not going to have a subdivision history to go back to, but maybe you can reconstruct. But um, yeah, my solution is if you have a high, arbitrary high res, the quick solution is zero mesh project, zero, uh, zero mesh project, subdivide project, subdivide project, subdivide project. But yeah, if you're getting mess distortion, it's gonna be kind of clean up and it is kind of a pain. Um, I wish there was a better solution. Maybe AI will do that, figure that out for us. Uh, how can I get time to work on stuff when my cat constantly get upset over a lack of attention? I have a half staffy uh, border collie Aussie lab mix that is the same way. And honestly, I can just ignore and she'll eventually be like, oh, okay, I'll be sad and go and just leave. And um, But I can't do that. So basically what I have to do is um, just stop and then go out and, you know, wrestle for a little bit or play or throw some stuff around, take her outside and run in the backyard for a minute. And usually that's enough to satiate her. We also play hide and go seek. Um, maybe once or twice a day, me and my wife will have four treats and then I'll, she'll keep her in a room for 30 seconds and I'll run somewhere else in the house and hide. And then uh, we'll let her go and we'll say, go get, go get mom. And then she'll run around and go and hunt us down. And then she'll find us and then we'll give her a treat and she'll run back up and they'll say, show me. And then she'll take the other person back to where the other person is. And we'll do that a couple times and swap off. And uh, she seems to enjoy that. So, cats, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if cats can play hide and go seek, but uh, that's what we end up having to do. Um, AAA game character, you still retope within ZBrush to change high poly on the fly, or would you take it to retope a tool like Topo Gun? Um, yeah, yeah. For If I'm just doing production work, then um, yeah, I'll retopologize, Max Maya Model Blender, Cinema 4D, you know, Topo Gun, whatever is easiest for you. They're all very, like, it's 2022. They're all variations on a theme. You know, they all have, it's, quad draw ish you know you go through and you put dots or you draw lines or you whatever and you plot points and you hold down shift and you move stuff around and you smooth and it snaps and you all know the drill so yeah just do that and then for uvs i'll use rhizome i'll use Hedis, i'll use maya um those are my three i usually use but that's just because i'm comfortable you know if i was a 3 studio max user cinema 4d user just use those uv tools they're all pretty good um Blender, you know, whatever you want to use. Um, <laughs> streams with the initial creation of the Space Marine. Yes. Uh, under my big blue genie up at the top here. Uh, Warhammer 40k. Or even just on my YouTube channel. You just type in. What was he doing? He was doing some sort of Space Marine. Not Spare Marine. <laughs> and then uh, it, should, it should pop up. Uh, cool. <laughs> Refuses to go to sleep and oh man. All right. Well, what you're going to need is like a VR headset and like uh, a Nintendo power gloves and you can do your 3D modeling while laying in bed and uh, your cat can sleep next to you, I guess. 
get a lay down desk. Those exist, right? Um, <laughs> well, border collie to great day. That's a that's a that's a lateral or that's a move. Um, uh, we're not. Well, we're kind of. We didn't really make anything today. I made a uh, a belt buckle and we painted. <laughs> Sorry, uh, we didn't do much of anything today. We answered a ton of questions. Hopefully, those are useful. I'll go back to the YouTube video and break them up so you can kind of step through them. This is a hodgepodge day, so nothing. We're not making anything today, but um, maybe so. Thursday, Tuesday, next Tuesday, I'll be on ZBrushes and I'll paste it back to my YouTube channel. Um, if you think of something cool, let me know, and uh, we'll we'll do that. It's something linear cool so I can bite size take a chunk off and stuff so uh preferred method for stylized fur I think um god do I have I think I do on this computer let's see file xmd toolbox I'll just pull this onto the screen real quick and we'll type in fur yeah I would just I want to say there's like some fur brushes in here, pen for SK fur. You know what? There's also, uh, for example, I want to say a brush chisel organic. This one has vector displacement. So on my channel, you can type in vector displacement or VDM and it'll, it'll pull up how to do these, but here's some animal fur on here. So just kind of going through here and just being like using vector displacements to kind of do stylized fur uh, is probably my go-to. And you can kind of mix and match this, you know, kind of the big clumps down to the small clumps. Um, again, it kind of depends on what you're trying to accomplish. So some of these methods may or may not work exactly how you want. Um, but yeah, stylized fur. You can also, I mean, there's even uh, in Substance Painter, I think there's even, uh, oops, no more of a set. Um, and here, if we wanted to do, let me see, fur, uh, yeah, I'm sure there is, hold on, yeah, stylized bear short fur, stylized bear long fur, send this to painter, and you can actually use this, um, not that you would use it necessarily wholesale, but for example, you could, um, oh, sorry, it's got to load up. There we go. Um, layers, fur, let's single that out. And then you can just kind of paint in. And now again, this is going to be UV based, uh, which these UVs are trash, which we already talked about. So let's switch this over to triplanar projection and see if that helps us any. And then we'll tile this up a bit. There we go, and we'll rotate it around. Whoop. That's, uh, I guess, yeah, I guess it is way over here. Yeah, okay, so we got the bear fur, uh, and there's probably even like settings in here. Yeah, so you can change the fur color, uh, random seed. You have presets in here, and we wanna do like old gray bear fur. Um, switch to that preset and again we'll change this the tiling on this once it's done oops stop 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 um, let's play around with these um, the other cool thing too is instead of going here and changing the fur color what we could do is we could Let's do a fill layer here and we'll delete this out. And on this fill layer, we'll make a fill. And on this fill, we will choose stylized bear. Uh, and then on this, so we have a, now we have a fill layer. So we can go through here and we can say, okay, uh, switch this to triplanar, um, change the tiling amount and change the rotation. So it's kind of pointing down. Let's make this a little bit bigger maybe. Okay, so we have our stylized bear fur. And then instead of going through here and changing um, all these colors, so it's like, yeah, we just wanna tweak you know, laterally these colors. We can just go in here and add a filter and then change this filter to HSV. And then now we can go through here and we can just change all those colors on the fly. So you can make a little more druid saturation and lightness or whatever and you can go through here and whatever. So now we have stylized bear fur. And of course you can go through here and say, add a black mask with a paint and then you can go through here and just paint in or out you know wherever you want that fur to go so you don't even have to do 
and you could even do layered up so you can have small and then medium and then large and then different types of clumping patterns and then just layer them up in here and just paint it on um, space marines are clickbait that's right so uh and again if i was actually doing my job correctly i would do way more clickbaity stuff than this but um I'm trying to think if i ever had any real good clickbait um usually if i put my big stupid face on here there's a good one spongebob boom pops um, cool. Uh, I didn't make the breast weight, uh, the wings on the breastplate. We just did that manually, but, um, that, that process is on the, on the channel. <laughs> Thanks for the kind words, Vipas. Um, Baking Retopo, did you have useful links or anything about that? Uh, again, I think the Mechanical Skull series, if you want to buy that, has some of that, but it's not, it's not really like, oh, here's a really troublesome piece and how to problem solve it's more like hey it's a mechanical skull here's how you reach apologize it here's how you bake it done so uh feature tool you with zebras uh, would add that you'd fill it lack so would you like to see be added in the future oh man um actually my zebra summit presentation I, I called out a couple of those and this is kind of an interesting if you're if you're interested in uh actually it's on my youtube channel so here where you see the big mech and also where you see the halo in here uh this here the uh the presentation the zebra summit presentation you can check that out and that goes into i call out some features in there and then this one too this is an older one but the gdc 2015 we talk about you know rapid iteration and stuff like that but both of those are kind of interesting for rapid iteration and ideation within the context of the game which is super useful um i'm doing good uh, I am using, this is my last question because I really got to go pee bad, uh, home, this one. Oh, there's, there's a good clickbait. See my face right there? I'm like, hmm, don't you want to click on this video to see what I'm furrowing my brow at? Uh, it's this. I'm furrowing my brow at uh, this video here. So you can, this is the tablet I'm using. I, I mean, I had an Intuos Medium for, I mean, I still have it. Um, I use that for a long time, but um they sent me this and I did a review, so you can check that out. Cool. All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, chaos, everybody. Like I said, uh, let me know what you want to see on Tuesday. If there's anything cool you want me to make that I can have a little bite sized thing to make. And uh, I don't know. We'll go from there. But see you Tuesday. And uh, have a good rest of your day and good rest of your week.